Hello everybody, welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hotfix. I'm your host, Smooth Operative, and you are now watching Time Capsule. It is the show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and showcase awesome speedruns of games released in the same year. Tonight we are checking out speedruns of two highly rated games from 2002, Metroid Fusion, and later The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. But before we get started, I do want to touch on some of our upcoming events. First off, registration is live for Awesome Games Done Quick 2024. So if you'd like to attend the event in person January 14th through the 21st in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you can go to gamesdonequick.com for details on registration and more. Frame Fatales is also gearing up for the next event, that being Frost Fatales coming up March 3rd through the 10th of next year. And you can use the command exclamation mark FF in our Twitch chat or head on over to gamesdonequick.com slash framefatales for additional details. All right, friends, now that everyone is updated on the events, uh, let's catch up with our first runner tonight for Time Capsule here to show off a speed run of Metroid Fusion. Please welcome Ryan Ford. Hey, hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How's it going, too? I am good. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, no problem. Hey, appreciate you having me, though. <laughs> of course, yeah. Metroid Fusion. I um, I'm stoked. Yeah, this game's pretty dope. Um, admittedly, I'm like still slightly rusty, but <laughs> I did put in some practice the last couple days. So. We appreciate your practice, and I'm sure you will do just fine. <laughs> yeah. So. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> For sure. We'll... All right. So, to start off, though, uh, all right. Should we get the timer started? Yeah. Whenever you're ready, we're ready to go. All right. I'll count down from three. Uh, three, two, one, go. All right. Good luck. Let's go. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I wanted to ask. Uh, so have you uh, have you played the the um, the 2D Metroid game? I admittedly have not, and I think it's because I am the kind of person that gets a little, uh, like, sick if I'm looking at too small of a screen. You know what I mean? Like, in the car, or mm -hmm. I'm not sure where y'all were playing your Metroid Fusion, like, in the car, on the bus, at home, but uh, it's hard for me to look at that small screen. That's fair. So this is perfect, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah admittedly, I uh, used a nice big computer screen the first time I played it. Oh, that... <laughs> That's, you know what? Oh, it's a, it's our secret, okay? Brian, chat. No one has to know. Yeah, chat. <laughs> <laughs> secret safe chat. <laughs> Please. Yeah, currently I'm, uh, I'm using my uh, Game Boy Player, so I'm streaming from my Nintendo GameCube on my uh, CRT TV. Oh, so. perfect. The no, screen no. is like still decently big. <laughs> so do you feel like having a CRT is um, advantageous for something like this? Yeah, um, I heard that if you have a good, um, a good, like, uh, HD monitor, then, um, if you, like, one's at, like, the lowest latency, and if you have, like, everything set up properly, then, like, it should be about the same as a CRT. Oh, right. But, um, I don't have any of that to set up, so <laughs> <laughs> I just prefer to, prefer to use a CRT for, uh, yeah, anything that's older than, like, the Wii U, I guess. And uh, I just use a CRT for it. Right on. I also noticed that the game is perhaps in Japanese right now. I actually forgot how much time it saves <laughs> over the course of the run. <laughs> it's a few minutes, but... <laughs> I figured maybe you could give us a little bit of insight as to, to what the goal is. Like, what's our quest here in Metroid Fusion? Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, this game's definitely more... Uh, it's known to be more uh, linear than um, almost every other uh, Metroid game. But, um, so I enter these uh, navigation rooms and uh, this computer named uh, Adam gives uh, gives Samus objectives to do in this uh, space station. So, you see the space station was uh, infested by these uh, parasites called the X-Parasites. Then they... Um, can like eat and absorb uh, pretty much almost any uh, living organism, and also uh, uh, take their shape and abilities. So, oh my, my gosh, that's horrifying. Yeah, they're <laughs> in the lore. They they seem so insanely broken. Like I don't know, I don't know how they could like 
loose as a species, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess we, we hope that at the end of this we'll be the winners, right? But we'll find out. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, they, um... So, yeah, one was uncovered on uh, the planet uh, SR388, which was, uh... So, the planet played in, uh... The planet that Samus was on for Metroid 2, and, um... Basically, after that story, and then after Super Metroid, then when she goes back to that planet, then um, she gets infected by an X parasite, which uh, corrupts her uh, her armor, and um, they have to use a the DNA from uh, the last the last Metroid from Super Metroid, like Metroid Three. Um, some of its uh, DNA samples were collected, so uh, it was used to uh, save Samus's life because. Uh, the Metroids are natural, um, natural predators to the uh, X parasites. So, oh, uh, interesting. Yeah, so the Metroid DNA makes her um, immune to the X parasites now, and she also can absorb them. So, the yellow parasites uh, give me health, and uh, the oh, whoops, and the uh, yeah, yellow ones give health, and green gives you uh, missiles. Oh, and red ones. Uh, give you a ton of both well, that's very convenient Which, but we like that yeah the red ones are rare though but uh <laughs> they always come from those uh eye doors that i just killed right now and yeah so <laughs> that that's a bit of a bit of a war nice bit of yeah lore. well i mean <laughs> metroid's such a huge series like it's nice to have a little refresher sometimes right yeah exactly and since I'm playing in Japanese, like, you can't even read any of the text. So. <laughs> We're not sure how dire the situation is unless there are some Japanese speakers, readers in the chat, so. <laughs> exactly, because I can't read it either. It's, Just, uh, it's been a while for me, so I, I can see some katakana and some other uh, kanji, but <laughs> the details are fuzzy. Oh, wow. So you can read. That's cool. A little bit. Uh, did you... Uh, like, where did you learn? Like, when you were young or school? Or uh, yeah, I was learning Japanese in college. I um, was fortunate enough to visit the country for a couple of months, and I had a great time. But um, with anything, if you don't have a buddy to practice with, you know, sometimes you lose it. 100%. I always hear that for, like, mo when people are picking up, like, most languages. Like, just uh, being immersed in it is, like, what helps you uh, retain it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah, so <laughs> there, there was a bit of uh, RNG elements that I, I was dealing with um, just now. Like that boss, um, Arachnus, he can sometimes uh, roll, and he's like completely intangible if he like balls up and rolls. And uh, fortunately, he didn't do that, so I got pretty lucky. And um, and the uh, the eye door that I mentioned that always uh, drops the red X when you kill it. Um, it can shoot. Uh, so when it opens its, its eye, it can either just not shoot a beam and be vulnerable, or it can shoot a beam at you and, it, and you can't damage it during that time. So, uh, so it's like you a have couple a 50 of percent chance frames? of either. Exactly. Okay. You lose about three seconds for every uh, beam that you get. You can't damage it when it opens its eye during that time. So, um, it's fifty percent. Uh, chance for either either or to happen and um, you can go up to four four beams in a row and then it'll just open its eye and not shoot it, uh, if it does four in a row so we had pretty good RNG on that one yep nice yeah I was also trying a trick where um, so it takes uh, three, three of my uh, missiles to kill it but um, I try to get a double. So if you if you hit it if you hit its eye on the on the same frame with two missiles, then you'll uh, damage it twice. But it's a, it's a frame perfect shot though, and um, it's also a position dependent too. So uh, you have to kind of be standing in the right right spot and also. Uh, it, it's weird. So how <laughs> the technical it... details. Is... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say, so how does it work for if you need to practice something like a frame perfect trick? Like, are the checkpoints pretty forgiving in this game, or generous? Yeah, actually, uh, the community made a uh, practice mod that you can that you can use oh. to uh, to have um, save states. 
Well, that's really nice, especially for anyone that might be wanting to get into a run like this. Exactly. But that's how I that's how I do it, basically. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious, Ryan, what actually got you into speedrunning in general and, and eventually here with Metroid Fusion? Okay, so... Ooh, okay, yeah, there's a couple stories with that. So, um, for getting into speedrunning as a whole, like, I'd been following speedrun speedruns for a long time, like 2009, 2010, like on like speed demos archive and stuff. Oh, nice. OG. And then, yeah, I didn't do any runs like until like 2018 though, but um, I did know some people like that also speed ran some games like um, Ocarina of Time, like I knew Giano way back in the day and uh, uh, Narcissa Wright as well. Um, because both of them played uh, Smash Bros. Melee competitively, which I also played and was a top player for a few years. Oh, as well. yeah, let's go. That's quite an accomplishment. Yeah, the classic parallels where there's uh, a. <laughs> it's like melee, melee player turns speedrunner. It's like <laughs> kind of common. Well, I imagine you and, uh, get, got a little burnt out eventually on melee, so so this was like the next, next thing. Yeah, like I was starting to burn out, but then. Uh, I was starting to burn out, and then also COVID hit on top of that, so I was like, oh, I'm kind of, I don't know, I kind of don't want to spend the time grinding for, for Melee now, because uh, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to travel, like, All right. after things let up on COVID and everything. Yeah, tournaments get canceled and things like that. Exactly, and I'd, I'd also been competing in uh, Melee since, like, 2005, so, like, <laughs> over half my life, pretty much. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, so, I don't know, it's a combination of just, yeah, burnout from playing for so long, and even though I do enjoy, like, traveling and socializing a lot, um, yeah, like, grinding and, like, playing a ton, like, you know, hours upon hours a day, like, can be taxing. Yeah, can't, you can only handle so much, you know? Yeah, exactly. Also, this RNG is a great <laughs> Gotten seven beams on, uh, or eight beams on two cycles. But yeah, um, but yeah, to continue with the uh, getting into speedrunning, so um, another local Smash player. Um, a lot of people probably know Pidge, like in speedrunning space, and um, uh, since she runs uh, Mario RPG, uh, well, she runs some other games as well. But Mario RPG, I'm pretty sure it's what she's most known for. But she also is a competitive uh, Smash Bros. Brawl player and Smash 64 as well, so uh, there was a lot of overlap with tournaments with uh, Melee and those games as well. And um, yeah, like I've known her since 2000, it's been a while, 2010? Oh wow, yeah, it has been a while. So It's just great though. It's been a really long time. <laughs> yeah, and since we both live in uh, both live in the same city, then um, 2018, she saw she was watching my stream like I was doing oops, doing a casual playthrough of uh, Mario RPG, and then um, I already knew that she'd been running it for years at that point. But she was like, "You know, Ryan, I could uh, teach you the run. It's uh, not too hard to <laughs> not too hard to pick up." So I was like, "All right, um, if I slow down on traveling for melee, then I'll uh, take you up on that offer at some point." And um, during that time, I was uh, sponsored for Melee, so like I had like travel and tournament costs paid for and stuff like that. And um, but I actually lost my sponsor like a month after she uh, she offered to teach me Mario RPG because um, oh, they uh, unfortunately had to declare bankruptcy. So. Oof, yeah, that's tough. So I didn't do anything bad. It just they just uh, the the org just disbanded because money. But, yeah. yeah. And um. And then uh, after like, I think like three months, no, two months after that, um, since I wasn't traveling much for events, then uh, for Smash events, then I, I DM'd her and I was like, yo, you still down to uh, teach me Mario RPG? And she's like, heck yeah. <laughs> heck yeah. <laughs> and then um, I went to her place. Um, during, during the summer, I went to her place like four times. And uh, yeah, she had like a screen display above uh, above the TV that I was playing on. And then she was playing from like a separate setup and was like, here, follow this movement. And then she was explaining like 
strats, backup strats, uh, how to do boss fights for Mario RPG and stuff like that. Oh, wow. That's like, that's quite a setup, like really teaching you hands on right there. That's cool. It was so sick. <laughs> I, I think that's why I got a pretty good time really quickly in that game, because like she pretty much gave me the whole knowledge dump, dump like between those uh, four sessions as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, I bet. So I managed, I managed to get, um, what time did I get? I got like a sub 255 even after like five months. So it was pretty quick. And the general and, time um, for RPG is like, I'm guessing over three hours at some, something like that. Yeah. Usually the first big milestone for people is trying to get like sub three hours. And then, uh. Yeah, and then for sub 250, uh, there's... Dang, I think there's only like six people that have sub 250. So. Oh, wow, yeah, tough run, I guess. To get, to get, uh, shave just that little bit of time off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, like, I ran the game for about two years, so... Uh, like, two years, like, pretty, like, rigor rigorously, and, um... Yeah, my PB still stands at a uh, 250.51 per Nice. Which is, um, I forget what place that is. I think it's, oh gosh, it might be like 7th or 8th or something like that. It's in the top 10, though. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. So, so you I and, actually forgot the exact number. So you and Pidge still keep in contact on our friends? Yeah, definitely. Aw, nice. Um, yeah, we went to uh, No Reset Marathon in, uh, we carpooled, like, to Montreal in, shoot, when was that? Uh, it was, like, <laughs> August 18th weekend, so, like, a couple months ago. Oh, wow, well, yeah, that's recent. Nice. Yeah, her and her uh, boyfriend, uh, Sean Cass, he uh, moved in with her um, pretty recently as well, so. Well, he's the one who drove, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it was a fun time. Yeah, super dope. I ran um, Metroid Zero Mission for that event, so That's I went over estimate for that run. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure it's, it's okay either way. <laughs> yeah, it, it was funny. They uh, for people that went over estimate, they had like a slowpoke uh, plushie, so they like just plopped Aww. it in my arms like the moment <laughs> I was over estimate. <laughs> slowpoke is the cutest. I know, right? Yeah, slowpoke, slow bro, and slow king are like within my top like 15 favorite pokemon like all three of them so nice i gosh i haven't thought about that in a while like what do i have a favorite pokemon <laughs> i haven't played in so long <laughs> i know right and it's hard because there's so many so many like new gen gens too there's so many that are so adorable it's like i can't choose <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Yeah, I know a lot of people uh, mostly stick with like Gen 1 and maybe Gen 2 as well, but... I think it's the easiest to remember because of the Poke Wrap. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, some of y'all might remember the Poke Wrap. But everyone played those as kids, so... <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Another game yeah. I couldn't exactly play on the Game Boy because of my like motion sickness. Wah -wah. Oh, fair. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. Oh, kind of on a, well, somewhat similar vein, like, uh, my best friend, he he couldn't play GoldenEye whenever we would uh, try to play it together. Oh, um, interesting. You get motion sickness from, like, the first person view. So. That kind of makes sense. I, I feel that way about, um, what's the game called? Mirror's Edge, because you're oh, going very yeah. fast and you're also in, in first person mode. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's another game that looks really cool to speedrun as well. <laughs> and insanely broken. I've seen it in a bunch of marathons. So. Oh yeah, it is for sure a cool a cool run. And I can actually watch the run fine, but when I'm in the hot seat, I can't do it. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I'm curious. I've only played like the first like 15 minutes of the first uh, Mirror's Edge. But, that's about as far yeah. as I got, Ryan. Oh my god. <laughs> Which, you, you have an actual excuse, <laughs> though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my buddy that uh, got motion sickness from playing GoldenEye 64, uh, for whatever reason, he was fine playing Perfect Dark, even though the games look almost the same. Perfect Dark is another really cool run as well. Yeah. It's a game I want to... Oh, whoops. <laughs> I made a mistake. But yeah, it's a game I want to pick up as well, because... um. 
Well, I know I know people focus on uh, individual levels more so than full game runs, even though there's both for it. But um, I feel like it might be like a low commitment if I do some like individual level potentially. Yeah, that's true. Like, get a feel for it. I, I feel like it's it's a good idea with any speed run is maybe just check out one level and see if you can do it. If you like it, maybe exactly. continue. So, so which boss is this now? Yeah, Zazabi. Uh, it's pretty unimpressive, but also has uh, quite a bit of RNG because of the amount of times that he can uh, jump over you is uh, random. So, oh, I got perfect. I got or I got the best luck on that cycle. But, uh, so yeah, first, uh, first cycle you can do anywhere between what is it, zero, two, zero. I think it's zero to three jumps on the first cycle. Then second cycle you can do one to four jumps, and then third cycle you can do between two and five jumps, and then that fourth cycle he always uh, jumps immediately every time. But that one wasn't actually just luck. Right <laughs> you you yeah, got it. Bosses down. Yeah, third cycle I got um since he did only two jumps, that was like ideal luck, but um the beginning of the fight was uh it was kind of below average luck, but I think it averaged out <laughs> to be about average because of getting a good third cycle. Oh yeah, so I just saved because uh I might die. I'm gonna try and show off uh SAX skip once. So Samus got cloned when she got um Infected by the uh, X parasite, so oh, I messed it up. <laughs> I might live. Okay, I live. <laughs> oh my goodness! Wait, so is this her clone? Yeah, so it has like it copied Samus's abilities at at full power, and uh, when Samus had to have her cert or her suit uh, surgically removed, she lost all her abilities. So I'm kind of oh, getting wow. them back uh, from uh, boss fights currently. Oh, that's kind of a cool premise for the game. Yeah, this this game I think has like a good excuse as to like, you know, Savas losing her abilities compared to oh whoops I'm going the wrong way, uh, compared to uh, some of the other uh, Metroid games. So yeah, that SAX skip. Uh, so yeah, it's called Samus Aaron X or SAX for short, like that uh, that copy of Samus. And um, so the skip uh, I would have. Ideally, wanted to only take uh, two hits, so I ran right up to the SAX and got frozen. And then, um, if you get frozen really close to it, then um, it shoots you with a super missile. And uh, if you're really close to it, it'll shoot. It'll knock you to the left instead of knocking you backwards, like to the right. And um, if you do the movement correctly, then uh, the SAX won't like shoot at you again the second time, and you can just kind of run to the left and run out of the room but um i think i started my movement too late so it like triggered the ai to like try to shoot me again immediately after so i got frozen the second time but it uh leaves you at one health um when you get frozen <laughs> and then usually it'll just like finish you off with the missile but um since i managed to at least run far enough away from it then um i was able to dodge the missile afterwards because i one one health in a dream exactly <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, because I messed it up, um, and plus since I saved, just because I wanted to try to show it off once, then uh, I probably lost time compared to if I didn't even go for the skip and didn't save, but <laughs> still had to show it off. So, you know, sometimes it's, it's just like that. <laughs> we appreciate you trying there anyway. Exactly. Yeah, normally it saves like seven seconds if you just uh, get it all correctly and also don't safety save, but... <laughs> It's hard to get out of the habit of safety saving, and especially for, you know, like a marathon run or a show run, you know, you want to keep keep the pace moving, exactly. so I understand. But yeah, if I died the first time, then I would have just, uh, like, not gone for it the second time. And just, uh, normally what you're supposed to do is uh, hide on the top, and um, the SAX won't see you, and it will just eventually leave the room, and then you can go and, and leave. Right on. But yeah, if you uh, run into it, it'll just uh, destroy you. You also can't, uh, since I don't have any uh, any upgrades yet, then um, I can't do any damage to the SAX as well. So at this point in the game, when you encounter one, you have to just run. Oh, actually, yeah, I saw in chat. Yeah, exactly. You're being hunted by the, the SAX. 
since uh, uh, since they are uh, natural prey to Metroids, they uh, yeah, they basically hate Metroids, and now that Samus has Metroid DNA, they're like uh, hunting after her. So it's gonna follow you for the rest of the game. Yeah. Um. So yeah, fortunately, it's not like uh, you know, like those uh slender type games and stuff like that, where they're where right next. Yeah, where they can be like anywhere, See? but. <laughs> yeah, there's a certain Anywhere. point in the game where uh, where there's like a pre-designated like encounter. Oh, okay. That that's reassuring at least because I didn't expect jump scares from this game, <laughs> yeah, so I'm right? glad. <laughs> yeah, the music also is like pretty like creepy too. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the uh, Game Boy Advance games are so loud as well, so it's like <laughs> even more scary. Loud and, and crunchy sound. Yeah, exactly. Which actually, I'm gonna have like a loud volume warning for uh, one of the bosses, like way later. Sure, yeah. Which will be uh, Ridley. Uh, I'm sure that people that know the game in chat probably are like <laughs> waiting for the, <laughs> the, the, the loud sounds <laughs> of, of that point. Yeah, so this part, um, Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, since the last Eidor, um, when I said oops when I first encountered, uh, when I went to the Eidor, it was because I shot it with a missile, but, um, ever since I got the charge beam near the end of Sector 1, then, um, if I shoot a point-blank charge shot, it, uh, does a ton of damage, so you can, uh, kill, I can kill all the Eidors in, uh, one hit now, so that kind of, uh, reduces a bit of, the uh, RNG throughout the run. And also this guy, you can also kill him in uh, two cycles, so... I don't know all of the damage values in this game, but, um... I know that, uh... So, th this this boss, uh, Ceres, has, uh, 50 health, and, um... If you hit with all of the... So the charge shot has, like, three parts to it, and, um, if you hit with all of the parts at point-blank range, it does, um... 26 damage in total, so... You kill it in uh, two cycles with uh, two. Oh, nice. So you have to just get very close to it to make it go a little bit quicker. Yeah, exactly. Because um, right currently my missiles only do 10 damage. So and uh, uh, every time you hit it, then it'll start moving super fast using Samus's uh, speed booster ability that it obtained from uh, when the X-Parasite stole uh, Samus's ability. And, oh, uh, right, right. And while it's using the speed booster, it's um, completely invincible, so I have to like wait for it to run out every time I hit it. So normally, if you just use missiles, it would take like five cycles to kill it. So if you hit with just uh, two charge shots uh, at point blank, you get a two cycle fight, which is like significantly faster. Yeah, nicely done. Hey, thank you. Yeah, even though it was a two cycle, it was like a, a little bit slow because I got bad RNG on its uh, movement patterns. So I had to kind of wait for him to come close to me, but, um, you know, at least I uh, executed well, so it was still, like, decently fast, too. Yeah. Oh, and then also, uh, when it died, how it turned into the core, the, the X-Parasite core, then, um, so whenever, uh, so every boss that I kill will turn into a core, and then, um, if you, once you break the core and absorb the X-Parasite, then you, you know, you absorb the ability that, uh, that it that it had so with that one i got speed boosters so when i run straight then samus will start flashing and uh gain a huge boost of speed and i can use a ability called uh shine spark which uh you can uh like that <laughs> basically you can fly like really fast uh well you can go sideways upwards or diagonally upwards either way. But, uh, nice. Well, thanks for explaining. I was watching Samus like almost phase out of the game, so <laughs> I was curious. <laughs> yeah. So uh, since Samus moves really slow in water, um, I use the uh, that shine spark um, in the water to move at the speed booster speed rather than moving really slow. It, oh, nice. So like, it does work in in, wa in water from now on. Yeah. As long as uh, you have the speed booster charged already before you get into water, then you can you can use it. But um, the gotcha. speed booster won't activate like while I'm in uh, any liquid substances, so like water or 
lava, like stuff like that. It has to be like just ready to go before hand. Yeah. So I got a, a uh, certain upgrade later, which will um, let you uh, <laughs> move freely in liquid, basically. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> But yeah, so the the, the X core that I uh, killed after I killed the boss to um, absorb the ability. So uh, normally that core also takes five hits to kill, but um, I was able to do a three cycle by um, hitting two missiles on the same frame on two of the cycles. So that also uh, sped that up a little bit because um, every time that you hit the core, it becomes uh, invincible for like two or three seconds and starts flying around. So kind of have to wait out the invincibility frame, so... Uh, of course, the less uh, less cycles you need, then the less, uh, you know, then the faster the fight is, obviously. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, I forgot to mention about text smashing. Um, oh my gosh, smashing through text is actually kind of janky in this game. <laughs> I really dislike it, but... Um, so, when you're holding a button, uh, either A, B, or down on the D-pad, um, once you start holding it, once the text starts uh, scrolling, then um, uh, if you hold a button, then it'll speed up. And then uh, you need to press uh, A to... Uh, uh, at the end of the text box, you need to press A to, uh, clear, to clear the text box afterwards. So uh, what I'm doing is uh, I'm holding down with my left hand uh, for every new text box that appears. And then I'm also uh, mashing, mashing A with my right hand to try and... Uh, you know, clear the text box when it finishes as soon as possible. Oh yeah, and it sounds a little bit tricky to time, but maybe you get used to it, one of those things. Yeah, it's pretty janky too, because um, if you are if you hold two buttons, uh, for, for uh, when you first need to start pressing and holding a button to speed up the text, if you press two buttons on the same frame, then it also won't speed up the text. So if I press down and A at the same time on a new text box, then uh, it won't... <laughs> It won't speed up the text until you like let go and repress uh, the button, basically. Oh, that is, that is actually pretty janky. <laughs> yeah, so you can just like waste a lot of frames like throughout the run if you uh, keep doing that by accident. It's like, <laughs> it's like, wait, how did I how did I lose all this time? Yeah, it, it really adds up to it's like <laughs> it's honestly my like least favorite part of, of the run. <laughs> Because um, on top of that, like whenever I play other games that in that involve text smashing, uh, <laughs> this one's so different that I always uh, I always forget at the start of a run to uh, <laughs> to, to use like the, the mashing method that I mentioned. Sure. Some people also use just uh, B and A um, together instead of using down on the D pad, but um, I find it easier to use uh, both hands for the text text mashing. So. so, what controller are you working with right now? Uh, using a SNES controller. Okay, cool. Right on. I'll show it up to the camera in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Pro prove it, Ryan. Prove it. I'll see if I can see show the colorful button. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, nice. Super Famicom, so the Japanese. Uh, oh, yeah, SNES. so you got the fun colors. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, since, um... Yeah, since I speedrun Mario RPG and Donkey Kong Country 2, uh, both in Japanese, then, um... Yeah, I have a Japanese console and controllers. Cool. Do you have a favorite run that you that you work on? Ooh, uh... <laughs> Tough one, I eh? actually find Donkey Kong Country 2 to be really fun. Um, I'll probably I'll probably get back into grinding it again at some point. Um, I also like uh, Gimmick, that, that game I was mentioning. Um, that I'm yeah. supposed to be running for AGDQ coming up. Do you know offhand when you are actually doing the gimmick run, like the day and time? It's the Tuesday of the event. I forgot what day of the week that is. <laughs> okay, yeah, no worries. If if y'all do want to catch Ryan's gimmick run at AGDQ, all you have to do is go to gamesdonequick.com and check out the schedule for uh, for the upcoming AGDQ. Yep, yep. My run, I... unfortunately, though, the run's at like like before 8 a.m. Hey, listen, so. this is like my time to be awake so i'll be there you know all right sounds <laughs> you know good, what i mean good. and i don't know sh shout outs to the the night owls <laughs> here in the u.s yeah i also ran that that same game for um sgdq 2021 so. nice yeah i looked it up and i i haven't even heard of it 
until you mentioned it. And this gimmick looks adorable. <laughs> it's so cute, right? Y'all, it's like it's like a little green dude with like a horn and a, riding a star. It's so cute. Yep. I can't wait. The movement with the star is actually so sick. <laughs> <laughs> like my favorite thing about the run. It, um, so will you be... Oh, sorry. Sorry. I was going to ask if you'd be practicing, uh, like when you're going to start practicing gimmick again for, for the event. Okay, so... <laughs> Admittedly, most likely either late December or uh, early January. Cause, That's fair. Um, since, since I submitted to a lot of stuff, like, uh, well, this show, and then um, I have, like, three other marathons coming up for... Uh, they're all, like, within, within like, the next week. So... <laughs> oh, wow. you got a busy schedule coming yeah. up then. Like, the first one's uh, Fast Space for head Headspace. Like, I assume that you know Amber, right? Yeah. I do, yeah. So Amber's great. The event that they that they run um, for charity as well. So. Awesome. Awesome, yeah. A Amber and I worked uh, worked together very recently. Um, uh, they were doing a Sonic... What was it? Sonic uh, Adventure 2... Um, like randomizer and, and it was it was yep. blowing my mind <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was really blowing my mind like real really informative too like <laughs> for for runs I, I find them really entertaining oh oh yeah for sure yeah love working with amber yeah so i'm gonna be the first run of that event on friday at uh 10 in the morning uh eastern eastern time yeah, nice so running uh donkey kong country 2 uh the true ending category so i was pra that's what i was practicing uh just before uh starting this sh this show <laughs> yeah it was right before showtime and we're like where, where in the heck is ryan and then i'm like oh wait ryan's playing some donkey kong country too okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, and then when i was ending my it. stream then my internet went down and i was like oh my god what what is this the timing <laughs> the behind the scenes chaos <laughs> but but it all worked out yeah, it was like 20 minutes before showtime and the internet went down. I was like, no! <laughs> these, these things definitely happen and it's understandable. Yeah, coincidentally for like two other hotfix shows, uh, this has happened where my internet went down like within an hour before the run. Yeah. Or, sorry, within two hours before the run, actually. And I one of them. Now, I'm sure some of you know, but Ryan is kind of a Hotfix alum. What other games have you speedrun on Hotfix? A before? lot of the times, it's most often been. Uh, so I've run a lot of Hotfix shows uh, last year and this year, and um, they've almost all been like Donkey Kong Country 2 and Mario RPG, in particular. Oh, and uh, Legend of oh, Zelda: so I'm, Link's I'm... Awakening uh, DX as well. Right on. So we're unearthing Metroid Fusion for tonight. Yep, yeah, it's my first time running this in a marathon ever. I mean, in a <laughs> hot fix show ever. Hot fix, yeah. Yeah, no, not, not, not first time in a marathon, definitely not. <laughs> For this game. Well, I wanna, I do wanna say to those of you watching, if you are enjoying the run, make sure you follow Ryan here on Twitch. I will post the URL in chat for you, but it is Ryan underscore Ford 522. Hey, thank you, thank you. Oh my gosh, I didn't mean to fall in the water like that. <laughs> I wasted a bit of time since you can see how slow Samus moves in the water. <laughs> but yeah, this boss also um, can only damage it with uh, charge beam shots. So again, I want to ideally hit it at a point blank with the charge shot. So normally you could kill it in uh, four cycles, but it took me six there since I uh, messed up the opener pretty much. Some of these bosses are truly frightening. I've I been, know, um, right? I've been playing a kind of spooky game called Lethal Company, and I think what I'm seeing here is by far scarier than anything I've seen in that game. And that game is terrible. Yeah, this game is definitely meant to like <laughs> cause like fear and un unease. It's really cool. Like, I've seen some uh, retrospective videos on YouTube. Like some of them, like uh, the one I liked the most was titled uh, "How Metroid Fusion uh, Causes Dread." And that was before Metroid Dread came out, though, like years before. Oh, I thought you meant like dread and anxiety. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's what it. Yeah, that's what they meant. But uh, oh, yeah, okay, I, okay. I was just clarifying. It wasn't like a foreshadowing to Metroid Dread because it was like way right, before yeah, Metroid Dread got announced. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, like stuff like um, 
how everything like is meant to be like spooky and make you feel uneasy like the like the music the the atmosphere like darkened areas like the way certain like enemies and monsters look it's like uh, a more mature take on the game yeah exactly and um yeah metroid dread definitely took some elements from it like um like when you get ch chased by the sax uh Almost certainly, the getting chased by the Emmys in uh, Metroid Dread has to, has to have been in, inspired from Fusion. Because um, it's a similar thing where you get chased by by something that you can't like do damage to it, and it'll like kill you if it catches you, basically. So. Uh, yeah, I have to run away, no no place to hide, in, in this game, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that last SAX that I uh, got chased by is probably the second easiest one to escape um in hundo though it's uh if you have experience that in hundo it's like even if you make a mistake like you have so many energy tanks that it's like generally not an issue as well Whereas, um, do you generally prefer this category to some of the other ones for metroid fusion yeah um yeah this category i definitely grinded the most uh compared to any percent um uh, my PB at any percent uh, was even from a marathon run because, like, literally half of my uh, any percent attempts have been, like, only in, like, marathons. So, um, uh, when I picked up this game, um, I particularly wanted to learn 100% because um, the randomizer was new at the end of uh, 2021. Uh, oh, wow, like, that is pretty new. Yeah, so even, like, now it's still, like, relatively new. So, um, I wanted to learn, like, some speed tech and to know where all the items' locations are. So, I figured learning to speedrun 100% would be a good, uh, gateway to, uh, picking up the randomizer. And, um... Yeah, you know, randomizers are always really impressive. I feel like you need to know the game very well to complete one successfully, so... It, it's cool to see so many exactly, popping up. Exactly. Yeah, there's so many. Okay, there's so many randomizers for even like <laughs> games I would have never expected. Now it's crazy. And um. Yeah, it's wild. And then some games that I thought had a randomizer, like kind of only recently got a randomizer too, which is <laughs> also like odd on the opposite <laughs> opposite. <laughs> game, you know? Have you been playing any randomizers yourself recently? Um, oh shoot, I was trying to think if I have been recent. <laughs> I've done like Mario RPG randomizers like kind of recently. But, um, oh wow, there's one for that too. I, di I didn't realize. Yeah, um, there there is a team of people that have been working on it, but uh, Pid Pidge actually has been, has been doing a ton of work on it and still is doing a lot of work on it right now. Too. Nice. So I'm not sure how much she put on pause for the, because of the remake uh, coming out recently. Oh yeah, that just came out um, a couple weeks ago or something last month, maybe. Yeah, it was a. Uh... Oh shoot, how long was it? Uh, it's like a week and a half ago. Oh nice. Yeah, pretty recent. Did you do a casual playthrough of the remake yet? Yep. Finished what it. You... Uh, what did you like... think? So good, actually. <laughs> it was even better than I was expecting because. Um... Honestly, I, I kind of went in with kind of low expectations, and like it, it blew it blew me away. Like playing through, it. oh wow! I, I recommend okay. it to anybody. Nice. Let's uh, go, Super Mario RPG remake. Yeah, I also want to learn to uh, speed run that as well. But um, yeah, it will be like interesting. February or something. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see like the differences with some of you know some of these remakes coming out too. It's like. What, what what are the strat differences? I'm curious, you know. Yeah, because that game's mechanics are completely different from the original too. So, oh, so there, there there's you already go. been a lot of routing. So like, it's a uh, yeah, it, it's it's very different from the the original run, which was exactly what I was hoping for. Like, I was hoping that it'd be like very different. And nice, not just, perfect. Like, a, yeah, like I really didn't want it to be like a copy paste like route of uh, the original game. I'm so happy about that. <laughs> and yeah, um, I was a little late to playing the remake. Uh, a lot of people got it like day one when it came out, but. 
Even you're busy. So. You know, you, you don't have time to do it on day one, but you got there eventually, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like the night it came out, um, I had work. Uh, I had work overnight, so I couldn't. Um, yeah, I pretty much had to like leave for work when it came out, so I. <laughs> I gotcha. Couldn't do it. And then uh, the next day, uh, I, oh my god, uh, both I was like really groggy, but also uh, <laughs> a friend, Must play. Uh, I went to hang out for a friend's birthday that, that night, like pretty much like right after I woke up, I went to his place and then went to a party. <laughs> so how was party the party? The it, was, it was super dope. And then I got home at like 4 a.m. So uh, again, I was oh. like, all right, well, <laughs> no Mario that RPG is yet. <laughs> That is quite the party. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Um, <laughs> it started at like 10 p.m. that night, but I um, left early. To oh, no, sorry. It started at 7 p.m. Whoops. But yeah, I left uh, early at like 5 p.m. to get there. Like pretty much right after I woke up. So it was your friend a gamer as well? Everybody gaming at the party? Yeah, I know him from, uh, I've known him for a long time from, like, the, uh, also from the Smash Bros. Melee community. Like, Let's go. He, he's not, he, he hadn't been active, uh, for, for the game for, like, more than 10 years at this point, but, um, yeah, we still, we still hang out, like, maybe, like, three to four times a year. So. That's awesome, keeping in touch with the, the old pals. Exactly, exactly. And, um... Yeah, same with also with that party. It's like, coincidentally, like, his best friend got married to, like, a friend that I went to, uh, went to elementary school with as well. What? Like, oh my gosh. Small world. <laughs> These small world situations. That's wild. Yeah, so, like, congrats we all to them, here. though. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoops, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> there it is. Oh, also, uh, I see a few people in chat are, uh, say, are saying the meme, the emergency in Frank Z. Uh, <laughs> what does this mean? So basically, the uh, main the main boiler of this uh, space station that I'm in, um, the X parasites um, programmed it to self destruct. So that's oh, why wow. there's the timer on the top right. So, uh, I, yeah, I, so there was a voice saying emergency in sector three, and uh, yeah, the memes like. And yeah, the meme was born. <laughs> I see. Gosh, I don't know what it is about timers like this in a video game that give me so much anxiety. Like, I know it's a speed run, but I'm like, we got to get out of here. We only got five minutes. <laughs> it's stressful. <laughs> There's like so many people that I know that um, that have never played uh, Majora's Nest because uh, and have stated that it's because of the, uh, the three day element. Like it really it really caught me off guard my first playthrough of Majora's Mask, and I was constantly in a state of panic playing that game. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, at least we're, we're together in that. Yeah, it, it's still my favorite Zelda game like, of all time. Oh, definitely. I, I don't speedrun it or anything, but like, I love, I love that game to death, and I've played it a lot. It's a comfy game. I, I really enjoy watching any Majora's Mask. We had um, Majora's Mask randomizer just on uh, Sky's show before this on uh, RNGs. Yep. So that was fun. Yeah, I hope y'all uh, watched that. It was good. Yeah, I was lurking some of it, and then uh, and then I took a shower, and then I uh, meant to lurk while uh, streaming Donkey Kong Country 2 before uh, it was my turn to do a run. Here. Sometimes Diddy <laughs> Oh well, yeah, I forgot to pull up the stream so, <laughs> during that run. So. I'm in. Well, you're here now, and that's all. That's exactly. all that matters. So yeah, I missed the last like 40 minutes of the uh, of that uh, combo randomizer. But caught most of it though. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I mean, we always have our vods available for every Hotfix show on our YouTube channel. So if any of you are curious about uh, any of our other Hotfix shows, you can always check it out at uh, youtube.com slash games done quick. Oh, another time timer element game uh, that I've heard some people uh, didn't get into um, is The World Ends With You for the Nintendo DS. And well, there's a Switch. I haven't heard of this one. It's a... 
And what kind of a game is this? So it's uh, made by Square. So it's a. Uh, so it's an so it's an RPG. RPG. Or like anime okay. RPG, I guess. And um. It. Oh, actually, some of the characters have a cameo in. Um, oh my god, I forgot which Kingdom Hearts game it is. Actually. <laughs> Dude. Oh my gosh, it's forgivable. I think it's Dream. I think it's Dream. It's one of them. <laughs> Has anyone actually played every single Kingdom Hearts game? I'm I bet someone curious. in chat. Please weigh in. <laughs> Please, somebody weigh in. <laughs> Personally, I have not played a single one. I've um, I watched a friend play through like almost all of Kingdom Hearts two. But like I saw. Oh right on. I saw like most of the game, but I uh, haven't played it at all. <laughs> That, that was like a lot of my early experiences with Nintendo 64 games. Like I, we didn't have one when I was growing up. And so oh. it was cool being able to just watch all of the games. Like my first time seeing Ocarina of Time and, and everything like that was all just watching my friend play. So it's cool. Sometimes you just want to yeah, chill. I also, yeah, even though I've, I've had a, I had an N64 as a kid, but I, um, there's a lot of games that I ended up not playing that comes up in conversations when I'm talking to people. Uh, like, oh, oh yeah? this game is like so what? sick. I can't believe I've played it. Like, um, Last Chord, <laughs> this is one. Um, well, I recently played Chameleon no Twist 2, but uh, that was another one that uh, kept getting brought up in, in conversations I, I, before. <laughs> no idea. I, this is the first time hearing about it. <laughs> I, f I played the first one, which um, I like the game, but I I think it's a bad game, but I like the game, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, I absolutely know what you mean. Perfect. Yeah, there, there's some games that are like, I feel are like objectively not a good game, but I uh, <laughs> still like them anyway. <laughs> that's, how I f that's how I feel about a game I played recently. It's called uh, Tomb Raider, the Angel of Darkness. It's, it's notoriously bad in controls, but uh, it makes up for it in some of the interesting stories. <laughs> I've never heard of that one. <laughs> <laughs> that Listen, that's fair. Not a lot of people give it a chance because the controls are terrible. That's so funny. So it's another janky game. <laughs> it's very janky. Yes, 100%. Absolutely. Uh, thinking of uh, games with janky, janky controls as well. Okay, it's really old. For Super Nintendo, there's a game that I played a lot for... Uh, Nez, um, Batman Forever. Um, oh, we had it on the show. Um, <laughs> really? Not that long ago. I think Faust ran it. Yeah, yeah, we had fun. It was a good one. I, I, I enjoyed that round. It's another game I think is a, a bad game, but I uh, loved it. <laughs> so, so bad it's good. There, some movies like that as well. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, also, this is RNG, like saving the animals here. They, um, Oh my gosh, it's it's the save uh, the animals right Mandatory in this here. game, but uh, how long they take to come out of the um, the uh, habitation uh, habitation bay um, is random. So. I actually oh, had a pretty weird. good RNG that time. It's like really rare that you ever get good luck on, on the animals. <laughs> but in uh, practice, uh, like this, when I was practicing this morning was like the first time in a very long time that I'd seen good animal RNG. And now, twice in one day, that's a... Uh, I've never seen that before. <laughs> Tis the season, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they're being friendly for once. <laughs> yeah, even when I watch, like, other runners and stuff, then, um, it's, like, so rare to see, like, good RNG on the animals. Yeah. I think I've seen... I think that's maybe the seventh time I've seen, like, a good pattern, like, ever. Including like watching other runners. Too. Oh whoa! <laughs> and like, how many attempts would you say you've put into something like that? Okay, me you? not a lot. <laughs> but okay, uh, that's fair. So for good animals, uh, I think for good animals, that's like literally the first time in a run that I've ever like in a, in an actual run that I've gotten good animals. But um, I've definitely watched like hundreds of like runs from like other people's streams but yeah, oh, yeah in total um so when i was looking at my attempts counter on live split uh yesterday when i was uh i did three no reset runs to get ready for this so um i 
finished attempt number 43 in this category. <laughs> the magic number. Love that. And yeah, I've done about eight runs in any percent as well. So, <laughs> so not, not a lot. <laughs> and then, yeah, however many times I've done uh, run 100% runs in marathons, then... Well, I'm not I know too sure how many I've done, but so I'd assume I probably in total have done like 60 attempts out of all the, or 60 runs out of like all of uh, all the categories and including marathons. Oh, whoa, okay. Now I was gonna say you have a lot of marathons coming up, which is gonna mean probably a lot of practice for you. Do you have a stream schedule that you like to kind of go by? <laughs> Honestly, I just stream at random. <laughs> hey, like that's, sometimes that's I start at like. I, I, sometimes I, I'll go live at 11 at night, or sometimes I'll be live at like 7 a.m. or something. <laughs> I, I feel yeah. that. I do. <laughs> so you y'all can catch Ryan at some point. On, at some point. I really need to commit something. to a schedule, honestly. Just make sure you follow the channel. <laughs> it's hard, you know? Life happens and things come up, and sometimes you have to MIA for... Exactly. Week. And yeah, on top of that, like... Since uh, I do like I do gig-based work, like uh, work as a film extra for for like TV shows, movies, commercials. Oh, cool. Et oh yeah, you're in Toronto, right? They got exactly. a big scene up there. Cool, cool. Yeah. So like when I did the uh, oh whoops, I forgot to drop the fireball. But yeah, when I was doing the overnight, um, the day when uh, Mario RPG remake release, I. The film I was working on was is uh, directed by M Night Shyamalan, so I got to shake his oh. hand that night. Yo, that's so cool! <laughs> I I actually really like M Night movies. All right, every time a new one comes out, I gotta see it. <laughs> yeah, and I'm trying to think of. Oh, I've been meaning to watch um, Old. I haven't seen that yet. O old is. Um interesting there's there's a section in the movie i won't spoil but it is quite scary uh and also <laughs> giuseppe if you know you know <laughs> now i also met his uh his daughter since she's uh, starring in the movie that he's filming and oh, she, that's well nice. she also starred in old i think as well but uh so very cool so yeah family. is there a release date on it i'm curious I actually have no idea. <laughs> no clue? Okay, we're going to have to consult with Google on this one. I'm looking it up. Yeah, so the film was like... I don't know if it's just a code name, but it was uh, Good Grades. was uh, what I went on. Oh, okay, cool. Hopefully Ryan's not breaking NDA for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, good Grades. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Recent update. Uh, September. So I guess we'll have something to look forward to in maybe next year. Okay, okay. I'm gonna try to find myself in that in that film because I'm gonna try to find you now too. I was definitely right in front of the camera in the, the scene that I was in. So. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Six Sense is like the common, um, definitely the common M Night uh, movie that uh, everyone knows. Well, of course, that's what got him, like, famous as a director. Right, or yeah. Like, you know, them, it's, anyway. it's funny because I didn't really start watching uh, the M. Night movies until a little bit later. And um, my favorite one is Split, actually. Love Split. Ooh, that's a good one. And the recent one was pretty good. It was, like, uh, Knock, Knock at the Cabin, I think it was called. Oh, I haven't seen that yet, either. <laughs> yeah, that one was good, too. <laughs> yeah, Split, Split's uh, pretty dope. I like it a lot. For sure. And yeah, um, so yeah, uh, yeah, definitely work had been uh, slow because of um, like the the writer strike. Oh, the, for uh, sure. The actor strike that happened. So um, actually, uh, part of why M Night's uh, film in here was to kind of loophole uh, around the strike. So um, that makes sense, though. Yeah. <laughs> He's a he's a funny guy when when, when talking to him too. He's super <laughs> nice. People. This is fun that you you've given us a little bit of insight and something we didn't expect to to hear about. So thank you. 
Hey, no problem. Hey, glad I could provide the like at least something on top of uh this uh spicy Metroid fusion gameplay. <laughs> yeah, I I love thrillers. I, I watch them a lot, so very, very cool to me. Nice, nice. Same. Well, I wouldn't say a super huge amount, but like decent. Like a de like a decent amount. Yeah, I, I guess what I appreciate about M. Night is that it's never, like, too, too gory. It's it's just enough, you know what I mean? Yep, yep. Yeah, it's, like, not, like, deeply disturbing, I feel. like at least Yeah, it's not going to leave you with, like, scars and, and nightmares, hopefully. Well, maybe Sixth Sense did may mess someone up, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, sorry, about, sorry about that. Oh yeah, so normally you wouldn't sa want to save getting on this ship, but uh, you know, safety for for events, you know. Yeah, yeah. In case something weird happens. Though so in this category, like, I'm really not concerned about dying because uh, of having so much energy tanks. But um, I don't know if, if something something like you know freak of nature happens, <laughs> then. Like either that I actually die with, <laughs> that I actually die, or like I don't know, uh, game crashes or something. And, Are yeah, there any points in the game where it soft locks on you? It shouldn't. Uh, in this category, at least, it shouldn't. Um, there is a really broken category called um, any percent uh, memory corruption, which is the the shortest category. But it um, because you do a bunch of like kind of ace like stuff and um out of bounds shenanigans you can like very easily soft lock or crash the game in uh, that oh, category yeah. the game does not like that yeah but the, this uh this category is like it's like relatively like glitchless so but, so it's definitely uh among the safe the safer category uh near the end it's like Pretty easy to lose a lot of time, but like aside from that, it's like really shouldn't die in this, this category. So are we at a new boss now? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah, Yakuza the um a lot of uh first time players like often will get stuck on this boss for a long time. Like so many times I've heard in my stream like Yo, I was I got stuck on this boss for so long, or the boss is so hard, like stuff like that. <laughs> it's kind of like the wall, like during like first time playthroughs most of the time. Oh gosh, I bet. And yeah, he has uh, quite a bit of RNG. So like when he was uh, scuttling around the room at the start of the fight, then um, he can do that up to four times uh, before he opens his mouth and starts uh, shooting flames. Oh my god, I missed every double on the uh, on the court, but it's fine. <laughs> but Don't you normally, panic, everyone. Uh, We're fine. Yeah, you can break the core in like three cycles uh, if you get every double, but uh, since I didn't, then I got the regular six cycle fight. <laughs> let's go. But, Either way, let's go. But yeah, for him uh, scuttling around the room, um, I was uh, shortening those uh, cycles when he was uh, doing that by uh, getting grabbed on purpose. So... Each time I went in his hands, then yeah, that was intentional. Just to, uh... Otherwise, he'll go kind of like in a figure eight pattern, like all the way to the bottom of the screen and then back up to the top. So. Oh, but at least he knew the pattern. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think he did. Oh shoot, I forget if he did three three rounds of that or four rounds, but um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I got like below at least either below average RNG or the worst RNG. I forget. <laughs> <laughs> if it was three, that's just below average, and four is four starting to so. Yeah, so SAX chase yet again. Um, I think this is the last time. Oh. Uh, oh! <laughs> so I could have maybe died for that. Okay, yeah, so I just wanted to show this off real quick. So if you hang on that ledge, it'll, uh, the SAX will keep uh, jumping back and forth like that and, like, won't hit you. <laughs> Oh my gosh, doesn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. That's Nor perfect. Normally what you're kind of intended to do is, um, so the other, there was another door to the left um, that uh, you can, you go into that room and then there's a wall that you can hide behind and then the SAX uh, will 
lose sight of you and just leave the room if you hide there. But um, if you progress and just like shoot out those uh, those blocks that I shot shot out and fell through, then um, yeah, you can just escape the SAX instead. Uh, that way, Easy. since you're supposed to go go down anyway, then uh, yeah, it's faster just just to uh, you know proceed. <laughs> Proceed rather than uh, go into that one yeah. room and then go back. <laughs> oh my gosh, so many uh, four beams on the eye doors. <laughs> so yeah, four four beams is the worst you can get uh, on each of them. I forget what the... I, I watched the world record run recently. I forget how many uh, eye beams... Uh, Mr. Scotty got. Oh, is it something that like everybody will tally up at the end of a run? Yeah. How many? I oh, okay. Yeah, because the average. I think the average amount to get it uh, is around eleven to twelve. Uh, based off of, uh, based off of probability, like around eleven to twelve is like usually expected. But oh, I'm definitely like way past that amount because. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I think we might be past yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> like the charge core alone, even even though I missed the uh, double missile uh, to kill, um, on the first two rounds I got like, oh, I got four beams twice, so like eight beams, so that already was like <laughs> pretty bad. And then I got four beams on this, so already just like those two doors alone already is like past, past the average. The doors are just... <laughs> The doors are, are being uncooperative today. Yeah, it definitely happens. <laughs> my first, um... My first any percent run, I... Uh, the moderator that was uh, verifying my run, he... Said he was laughing at how bad the RNG was for the beams, because I... Um, for that one, I also didn't didn't <laughs> miss the doubles. Uh, on the doubles on the first two doors, so... Like, I had... Oops, I had like pretty much perfect execution on it, but I had 26 beams in that run. It was like, you know, more than double like the average. Wait, kind of oh cool. my gosh, I was gonna say, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's qu that's quite a lot more than anticipated. Yeah, so he said he was uh, <laughs> he just said that he was just like laughing at the run because he <laughs> saw the beams. I was like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, shout outs to anyone that, that does approve the runs uh, or moderates for, for boards on speedrun.com because I'm sure it takes a lot of time to go through and check all of that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So yeah, uh, I'm glad that uh, for some communities that they uh, like clearly state that they uh, might take a while to verify your run because like, you know, they they also like a lot of a lot of them have lives as well. So. <laughs> Oh yeah, and I, I think it's all volunteer based as exactly. far as I know, so it takes time, yeah. Yeah, because occasionally I've seen like sometimes people will like try to rush someone to verify a run, but um I think it's just runners getting excited, you know. I wanna, I wanna see my name on Exactly <laughs> on the board. <laughs> exactly. Cause yeah, I mean like yeah, competition's fun, like being able to show your results is also like fun and like gratifying so, um, so it's understandable <laughs> for sure yeah i also love this uh shine spark going across like four rooms i think <laughs> yeah okay it's four i, I couldn't remember the, the exact number <laughs> so see you the unstoppable samus wow look at yeah, her there's go. a faster strat uh slightly if you um instead of doing the shine spark so you can keep your speed booster if you're, um, what's it called? If you're, uh, like when you're in the air, when you jump. And, um, since I just got the space, uh, got the space jump from the, uh, oh my god, what's the spider boss called? Uh, Yakuza that I fought. Then, um, now I can, uh, do, I can, I have basically like infinite jumps when I'm in the air. Um, except when I'm underwater, apparently. It uh, doesn't work, but. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, like, you can just go forever with with the, yeah, like this. A bit with the ability. Yeah. yeah. So, 
You can uh, keep your uh, speed booster uh, with it while like chaining a bunch of space jumps to uh, go through each of those rooms. But um, it's actually really difficult to execute in that part because um, those broken doors, whenever you transition screens, uh, the game tries to place Samus on the ground. So you have to like oh. go really high through the door to um, each time uh, with your space jump to uh, be able to maintain it. Is it tough to time as well? Yeah, the other thing that's difficult is that the space jump itself, uh, I think mechanically, uh, I think mechanically the space jump in this game might be the worst one <laughs> out of all the Metroid games. Oh, Probably whoa, either okay. this or Super Metroid if I were to guess, because um, basically, uh, so you have to be falling for a certain amount of time before you can do another jump in there. And you have to be spinning too, so um, you have to be falling for at least uh, 15 frames, so like a quarter of a second before you can... Uh, input another uh, space jump each time. I know in Super Metroid it's every 12 frames if you're not underwater and then uh, Metroid Zero Mission has the best space jump because it's like every 8 frames you can uh, do another space jump. Oh, uh, I'm also oh, going to issue a flashing lights warning for uh, this boss. I almost forgot. Thank you. So, um, yeah, if, if anyone has light sensitivity, flashing light sensitivity, uh, definitely look away for a while. Is, um, when I kill this phase, um, oh my gosh, okay, so I'm also messing up the fight a bit, but um, when I kill him, he's gonna like fly to a specific spot on the screen, but he's also gonna be uh, flashing the whole time. Oh, right there, yeah. <laughs> and um, I ideally would like to, the spot where he died, I'd ideally like to kill him like near that spot, because it's faster and it also would have been uh, flashing a lot less too. But, um, yeah, if I killed him from like really far to the left or something, then he would have uh, been flashing longer. So. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so that's the end of the uh, flashing lights warning. By the way. <laughs> where where are we? We're like in the ship junk room, a server junk room. Yeah, so for this game, uh, this whole game is all on a uh, space uh, space station. Um, that uh where uh, research is done. Um, it's basically, uh, the environment is made to emulate um, planet um, SR388. So yeah, the planet that uh, Samus was on for Metroid 2. So are all and, these uh, enemies kind of experiments? Yeah, so yeah, they kept enemies from, or um, yeah, like um, monsters and animals from, uh, uh, from, that, from that planet as well to like do tests on but like pretty much all of them have been absorbed by the uh x parasites now so they're all um so whenever i kill any of them then they uh turn into those uh turn into the the yellow or green x's that i can collect to heal well yeah right. pretty much yeah, everything got infested that. by the uh x parasite uh uh breakout after uh um after samus got got infected um by the first uh, X parasite in uh, back on planet SR388. Right. Gosh, it's rough out here in the space station. <laughs> so yeah, like so Samus's mission pretty much was to come check if there was uh to see what happened and also to see if there's any survivors here. And um so far there haven't been any aside from the animals that I see, but <laughs> uh, they're the what only time uh will time will tell. Yeah, so far. So far. Yeah, okay. the animals so far are the only like healthy, uh, living, like actually living creatures that are. I, w still I here. won't get my hopes up just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know who else we might find on the space station. So. <laughs> yeah. So they do a lot of. Um, so yeah, there's like a lot of like uh, tests and experiments on uh, pretty much all the creatures for like. Um, supposed to be for uh, peaceful ap applications. It's all like run by the uh, Galactic Federation, which is, which is who uh, ordered this uh, mission for Samus. Do we trust them? So far, no. There was actually some like suspicious things that uh, oh. suspicious dialogue that happened earlier. Okay. Where um, when I was going up one of the elevators, there's some uh unknown person we still like no one no one actually knows who it is like it's never been revealed like even in the metroid lore but 
there's some dialogue talking with the uh, computer, um, Adam, that's been giving Famous these objectives. And their back and forth dialogue, uh, that mystery person was like, does she, does she, ah, does she suspect, suspect anything? And then Adam's like, no, I don't think so. And it's like, okay, good. Oh, it's like the uh, mysterious conversation that maybe we're not supposed to know about. Yeah, exactly. But, but then, they tell uh, us anyway. Exactly. And then there's going to be a bit more like shady stuff that happens. So then kind of like... Yeah, you know, the plot twist for Samus eventually happens where it's like, oh, there has been some, like, shady things going on. But so far, she doesn't know. But at this point, is suspecting. Because, um, uh, this area I'm in right now, um, she's not supposed to have access to this area, like, the, the deep part of, uh, Sector 4. But, um, because that boss I just fought, the Nightmare, it, um... It destroyed a bunch of parts of Sector 5, and um, the only way to exit uh, connects to uh, a restricted area of Sector 4, so uh, Samus is not supposed to intentionally meet here. So are uh, you allowed to kind of pick and choose which ones you go to, or you said it's all very linear before? Yeah, this okay. is all part of part of the uh, story, like the right, story right. progression. Okay. Yeah, so I was going to try and chain uh, Shine Sparks there. So whenever you do a Shine Spark onto a slope, then uh, Samus will keep her speed booster. But um, unfortunately, uh, I actually got the hard part, and then I botched the easy part, so I lost the Shine Spark, actually. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Sometimes so I had it, to, uh, it's like that. Yeah, right? That happens with speedrunners all the time. Like, I'm sure you've had your share of that, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> You're I'm nailing so all of the hard tricks, and then the easiest part comes up, and it's like, I forgot what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So yeah, I guess part of this game's namesake, so I got the diffusion missiles, which uh, causes that uh, that radial explosion if you uh, charge your missile. Um, generally, it's pretty useless, honestly. And... Um, but um, there's some things that are out of range that you normally can't freeze with your um, ice missiles. So uh, you need that explosion to like freeze some obstacles to get them uh, either out of your way or to like use them as a platform, stuff like that. But it's very right. rare that it comes. Now, up, are there so. some? <laughs> I was gonna say, are there some abilities that just never get used at all, or? Yeah, I think that the fusion missiles is like the one that's like the least used. I think. In this category, uh, ah, I think there's only like three times that it's like truly optimal to use it, like in this run. I might use it a couple more times just for fun, but <laughs> uh, generally you don't have to. So just for a little bit of spark. Exactly. <laughs> Oh yeah, so there's a way to get to, um, so this, uh, navigation room, um, before I left out the, the underwater area, um, there's a way to get here early, but you actually get, um, dialogue from some, another mysterious person who's like, I don't know, it's kind of like fourth wall type thing, but, um, oh, I'm going the wrong way, cool. Oh, that's always it's fun. like, oh, uh, yeah, good job finding the secret. But now, uh, go back and finish your mission. Or something, something like that. <laughs> like, li wait, listen, we put this in the game so you could find it. You found it. Great. Now go do the mission. <laughs> yeah, it's like a little <laughs> Easter egg. Um, it, unfortunately, you can't, it's like, fun. actually skip anything. But, um, but yeah, it's like you can get there a little earlier <laughs> than intended. It's kind of funny. That's super, that's super funny. But, yeah, they leave the, uh, the door locked so you can't actually, like, leave there. Uh, to take the elevator that I just took. Unfortunately. <laughs> so where are we headed right, next? Now I'm in Sector 6, so back into the dark area. And, um, so the... One of the bosses I fought earlier, the box in Sector 3, uh, right after I got super missiles, it, uh... So during that fight, it ran away. And, um, now that it ran to Sector 6, it also got, um, because I damaged it, like Samus damaged it, and um, ex exposed its uh, core, then the uh, X parasites were able to um, infect it and take it over. So, oh my goodness! Uh, now, so it's gonna be beefy when we exactly. find it again. Exactly. So now I have to go 
find it because it's causing damage to some parts of Sector 6. And um, you have to go try to find it and finish it off, basically. Which actually, it'll be in this room that I just left, but uh, not yet, though. But first, um, it's gonna be a door that has a um, restricted access uh, right here. And, um, so yeah, if you hear that voice, it says, it says uh, warning, no entry without authorization. Um, so it's like a heavily restricted area that uh, no one's supposed to, supposed to go to, but I'm about to go find some uh, authorization on my own. So does going there kind of trigger the next step where you have to find uh, <laughs> this this yeah, creature here? Yeah, <laughs> it's what like causes the boss to spawn basically. So I had to okay, go fair, all the fair. way down there and then go back. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, like, what where else am I gonna go? Might as well. Yep. Look so around. now that his uh, core is exposed as well, then um, it's also electrifying the water, so you take damage if you're standing in the water while it's alive. A very low amount of damage, so it's like actually not not an issue in Hundo, at least. Um, any percent it could add up. The, the suit offers some protection. Exactly, and um, on top of that, when I fought the nightmare, the the boss that uh, where I gave the flashing lights warning, then um, that boss is able to uh, manipulate gravity, so it had uh, Samus's uh, gravity suit. So that's what uh. Let Samus be able to move freely in uh, liquid substances, so that's oh, why okay. that whole underwater area I was able to uh, move move normal. Nice, yeah, her, cool. Uh, grape colored suit. <laughs> ah, I love grape. <laughs> yeah, the previous suit I had was the Varia suit, which kind of has this like mustard yellow color that everyone hates, but <laughs> finally got rid of it. Aww. no love for mustard yellow, anyone? <laughs> Do you have a favorite? Yeah, I like the... I actually like her original color, like the, the blue. The blue? Okay, yeah. nice. Followed by uh, this color, second. <laughs> she has like an orange one too, yeah? Yeah, normally... Oh yeah, also at the end, I'm gonna have like a... I forgot, I'm gonna get like the orange color at the very end. So like her... Uh, oh, okay, perfect. Original uh, suit color. But um, yeah, yeah the reason cool. that her color changed was because of... Uh, the whole thing where uh, she had to, when she got infected by the X parasites, and then um, and then the scientists had to fuse her uh, her DNA with the Metroid's DNA from from Super Metroid. Right. So that's and, the um, suit that got ruined, I guess. Yeah. Right. right. Exactly. And then I have no idea why Samus looks the way she does in Metroid Dread, but uh. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's like an evolution of the suit or what, but uh, it looks oh, completely is... different from the Metroid Fusion look. So. <laughs> oh, okay, I was gonna say I, I know no Samus has had many games, so I always assumed the suit roughly stayed the same. Yeah, it's like always been the same pretty much up until uh, Fusion happened. Right on. Yeah, like it's always always. Well, and they were oh, doing. Sorry doing some different I was saying and you mentioned they were doing some different stuff with this game so that is kind of cool they decided to go yeah for it. exactly I agree I agree and yeah I think it was a very good se good sequel as well like um since there's a lot of dialogue it kind of helps expand uh Metroid lore quite a bit but then uh we also got the prequel uh, Metroid Other M which uh you know, they try to tie that story into this game particularly, so... It's a... Gosh, how many Metroid games are there? I can't believe that this happened. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, there, there's a lot of Metroids, <laughs> I know what happened. but... Hold on, I'll touch on that in a sec. I'll just explain what happened. Oh, Again? Sure. oh my god, yeah, no yeah. way. <laughs> okay, so basically, uh, so there's a little puzzle here to get a, uh item where... Okay, I'm definitely... Okay, I must be doing something wrong. So, when you kill the snail... Okay, thank... Finally, it's not all the way on the left, so this should be fine. There you go. Um, so, when the X... When it becomes an X parasite, then um, some of them just immediately turn into a, a new enemy. So, um, you have to kill... So, you have to, like, kill each new enemy that it becomes for that, for that door to unlock. Which is, like, a really weird puzzle, but... 
Um, sometimes when you kill that first snail, sometimes the X-Parasite will just, like, keep flying in a circle, like, infinitely, and not spawn the second enemy, so... Oh. So that's kind yeah, of what was happening Yeah, it happened twice in a row, it's like, oh my god. Right, yeah. I think that's yeah. the fourth time... Now that's, like, the fourth time that's ever happened to me, now that it happened twice. <laughs> twice in the same run, but... <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, that's, like, half the... the... <laughs> quota right there yeah, it happened yesterday too um it's funny because like in one of the runs i was doing yesterday i was talking about how that happened once and then it like happened as i was like saying that how it happened <laughs> <That's> like... <laughs> isn't that always the way of course because yeah the first time I, ha I had it happen i uh clipped it uh clipped on my channel and um people said yeah uh some people in the community said yeah that sometimes happens if you uh are slow killing the uh, snail, but I think I was too slow because uh, it was like really far to the left uh, each time when it spawned. Oh, it was just like unlucky spawn. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I could have like still killed it faster to prevent that, but uh, yeah, it was kind of unlucky. Oh, I forgot to give the loud sound warning here, my bad. <laughs> Whoops. I think, for, uh, I think chat wants us to turn it up, so you're, you're good. <laughs> That's always a meme. <laughs> Yeah, Ridley, um, it's actually in the official guide, it says, um, you can, uh, kill him with a hundred missiles, but, uh, the, the way to, the way to kind of cheese him, so now that I have the, uh, plasma beam, which I got from, um, it was like the, the plant area, like the, the big, uh, plant, the big plant boss, where I was just, like, spamming a ton of missiles at it, and not really doing much else, <laughs> that, um, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so it had the plasma beam, and um, whenever when you shoot enemies with the plasma beam, it does uh, damage per frame as it passes through them. So it uh, uh, so charge shots can like melt a lot of enemies like really easily now. And um, yeah, with Ridley, you can kill him in about like twelve to thirteen charge shots uh, because his body is so huge, and uh, and and since the shots will do dam damage per frame. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot faster than shooting a hundred missiles, basically. <laughs> oh yeah, it it looks cool too. Yeah, and um, oh yeah, we've got like different names for the <laughs> for the beams, kind of. So now that I also got the wave beam, so like the beams just kind of um, add on to like Samus's uh, current uh, beam combo whenever you get a new upgrade. So the last upgrade I got was the wave beam from uh from Box, like the boss that I was fighting in the uh, electrified water and stuff. And, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I got the wave beam from him, and uh, it pa so the wave beam passes through uh, solid objects, so like walls, walls and stuff. So you can just uh, attack anything through the wall. Yeah, so like that, that door that had the, uh, that said like, no entry without authorization. Um, the switch was on the other side of the door, but then um, with the wave beam, since it can like, uh, whoops, since it can uh, pass through doors, then I, uh, yeah, basically just, uh, yeah, shot the wave beam through the door. It is intended. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, that was unlucky that I got hit there, but I'll try this again. <laughs> so yeah, now that I've beaten pretty much uh, most of the main bosses, um, I also have to do this like 20 minute long cleanup. Probably. Of uh, yeah. all the items that uh, that I'm still missing to get um, 100%. Yeah, I was gonna say you have to get the rest of the shopping list. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because um, if I go and fight the final boss, then I'll be oh whoops, I'll be uh, locked out of um, getting the remain the remain the, the remaining items. So I have to do so it all now. Is there a screen at the end of the game that like tells you for sure you've gotten everything? Yeah, um, the credits are going to be way too long to watch, though. <laughs> sure, yeah. But we'll, we'll just, we'll trust that it's 100%. It's good. Yeah, because after the credits, it shows your uh, in-game time and um, and your uh, uh, percent completion as well. Oh, okay, right on. And yeah, um, yeah, I guess it, even if I do happen to miss an item, it shouldn't really... It won't really affect anything, like, gameplay-wise for the run. 
compared to, um, like, Metroid Zero Mission. Um, actually, the final boss, if you get 100% 100, 100 of the items, he has, like, three times more health and does the, uh, oh. twice as much damage. So, wow, if you happen that's... to just, like, kill him really fast, then it's like, oh, you probably missed something. So. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I didn't even, like, consider that. That's so funny. Yeah, so... <laughs> Like that, that's how you know the runs in Valid in, in that game, at least. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's probably very easy to spot, too. Yeah, because, um, that boss. Oh, where am I going? Whoops. Yeah, that boss, uh, yeah, Mecha Ridley in that game, he takes, uh, oh shoot, I actually forgot how many missiles it takes to kill him. Oh, um, it's like six super missiles normally, and then, um, if you have 100%, then it takes like 18 super missiles to kill him. So, you know, if he dies in like six hits, then. Oh, yeah, yeah then you're like, well, <laughs> this is valid. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious. But yeah, the cleanup definitely is pretty long. And, um. What was I gonna say? A lot of it's like puzzles with either uh, chaining shine sparks or, um. Or commonly, uh, if it's a power bomb expansion, then, um. Usually you need to use a power bomb to get the power bomb expansion pretty common. But then, yeah, some other ones, there's like speed booster blocks like that one that I uh, just got. Which, um, which, yeah, when I mentioned earlier about uh, using your space jump when you have your speed booster um, and being able to keep your speed booster active without um, using your shine spark. So it's using that tech to save a little bit of time. Which, uh, we call it the uh, space boost. So space boost. Okay, cool. Space jump and speed booster combined into like <laughs> one game, I guess. <laughs> Makes me want to put on some moon boots <laughs> and go jumping around like Samus. Right. <laughs> I I never had a pair, but now I kind of want one for want a pair for Christmas. Maybe I'll ask <laughs> Santa. Got to bring out the inner childhood. <laughs> Yes, gosh. I, was there anything that y'all wanted for Christmas, if you do celebrate, that you just had to have it, and you, you opened it up Christmas and you just got so excited? I'm wondering what some of those those gifts might be for y'all. Uh, oh my god, I feel like I had like at least five or six different things that I wanted. <laughs> oh man, off the top of my head, I actually can't remember. Same. I mean, you know, the Christmas is for the for the kids. I feel like nowadays, um, so it's all about my niece and whatever whatever she's interested in. What she getting? Oh. <laughs> I gotta I gotta figure out uh, what was cool with the kids soon. <laughs> well, yeah, Heelys was one of them. <laughs> that, uh... <laughs> yeah, the Heelys. Oh, you could like uh, like it's like roller yeah, skate. Yeah, exactly. That that Those was something cool. I I really wanted as a kid, but never got them. Oh yeah, Healy's are cool. Yeah, more often than not, a lot of gifts I usually wanted were video games, and uh, that's fair. Them I, got, I mean, but not all of them. Like, I never got Mario World Two Yoshi's Island, which was one that I always wanted. Aw, have you played it since? Yeah. Oh, okay, nice, nice. I want to learn. So, was it everything you that. hoped for? Oh, sorry. Was it everything you hoped for? Actually, it was like. So much different than I expected it to be, but it was like <laughs> a really good game though. So you think you you, you were saying that yeah. you might be interested in speedrunning? Uh, some some friends that run oh, other okay. games that um that also run Yoshi's Island and like it seems like a very interesting speedrun. That um the the people would be willing to help you out. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, so not really much to talk about for the run as well. It's like just revisiting all the sectors and like now that I have all the uh, movement upgrades, essentially, then um, it's uh, it's, it's faster to collect a lot of this stuff like now compared to before. Yeah, it seems kind of like smooth sailing now. I mean, I know some of these enemies aren't getting in your way, but... <laughs> Oh my gosh. I, I've actually never done this uh, topside route before, so I, <laughs> I uh, yesterday stream. Oh wait, I could have just uh, screw attacked that block. It's fine though. Um, yesterday, uh, another runner in chat said that I was uh, doing the wrong route uh, from the the route that I normally do, which um, 
The route I was doing apparently is like faster for in-game time, but um, taking the top route is faster for uh, real time. Oh, right on. So I assume I was slower since I got hit a bajillion times, but... <laughs> <so>. <laughs> I like this world though. It's kind of, you know, bright and it, it feels very final. Like we're getting close to the end, you know, the, the orange and red lights are flashing. Yeah, that one's sector three. It's like a, it's supposed to be like a really hot area, with like uh, desert and then also lava. So. Nice. I think I'm just like really realizing that I love the color orange. So <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Yeah, and I hadn't been to the the back side of Sector Three so uh, until until just now. So, yeah, pretty much like most of the orange part is on the the entrance and the uh, the western exit area. It was uh, my first time uh, visiting that side of that sector. Well, it was the first time for everything. You made it work. Yep. yep. And here's a uh, Sector Five. So, well, revisiting Sector Five for like the fourth. Five, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's like hard to keep track. I guess you do have to kind of do a lot of backtracking for these things. Yeah, because the first time you visit, uh, so so Samus is directed to get. Um, so there was some uh, download data that I was uh, collecting every every now and then, and um, it's uh, abilities that are sent to Samus that she can go and download to like add on. So. Well, easy. Uh, so the first time I went to Sector 5 was for ice missiles. And then after I saved the animals, uh, shortly after that, then came back to down the same download data to get power bombs. And then the third time I visited was when the nightmare was uh, destroying the sector. So that's why uh, there's a lot of like cracked, uh, like shattered glass and stuff uh, on that uh, last visit just now. Oh, okay. Yeah, that does explain it. Because it uh, caused major damage to the sector, and uh, yeah, then I had to go and uh, defeat him to uh, put a stop to that. <laughs> we, we can't have that in our speed runs here. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. And yeah, I do want to kind of respond to uh, someone that had mentioned it in the chat. If, if uh, y'all can ask questions, and the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I, we did have a question come in for you, Ryan, from chat. Uh, someone had run the game for a little bit and it was hurting their wrists what kind of um would you recommend for hand health when running these kinds of games like do you do hand stretches or like how do you keep on top of it uh before before and after uh runs i actually i do do stretches because um oh my gosh what was the reasoning <laughs> oh um all right since i've been into competitive smash Bros. melee for a long time there are a uh, decent amount of people that have gotten that have had like hand injuries and stuff so like, hand health has been like emphasized a lot like within the last like 10 to 11 years so like i i, I got into the habit of like doing um hand stretches like um as much as i can like during during downtime or if i'm like doing nothing or if, or like right before i'm about to do hand intensive stuff um, the other thing is um, for this for this game, uh, if you're using a Game Boy Advance SP as your controller, um, there is a um, oh my god, what's it called? There's like a hand grip attachment that you can uh, that you can get. Oh, I forgot the name of it though. I think it's called a uh, dual dual grip, but I might be wrong on the naming. I, I bought it so long ago that I actually forgot the name, but. <laughs> Even though uh, I'm using a SNES controller like for running, but like when I practice, like, oh wow, I got that crumble jump first try. It's funny. It's a frame perfect input as well. <laughs> Yo, GG. Yeah, you get like four or five chances uh, at it as you're falling down each crumble block, but I happen to get it like literally the very first uh, press. It was true game. Yeah, very <laughs> professional of you. I appreciate the compliment as well. And yeah, so... What was I going to say? For the... Uh, yeah, um, if, if anything's like hurting your hand, I, I definitely recommend like trying to check how you're uh, gripping uh, a controller or if uh, 
if you're using just like a raw Game Boy Advance SP. Um, personally, I find it strenuous on 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 the wrist to not have that hand grip attachment. So um, I definitely recommend uh, getting it. And I, I imagine that you could probably get something like that for for any controller. You know, if you search hard enough out there. Yep. Some people have some uh, <laughs> DIY DIY ones. Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> some some fun. Uh, <laughs> creations for for helping out their hands i've seen some funny ones oh my gosh for like gamecube controllers and like snes and stuff like that so that's like a thread of images i'd love to see just everyone's very bizarre like hand uh, like controller setups ergonomics you know whatever they got yep some of them are so cursed looking it's so funny <laughs> So, so when I you did um, competitive Smash, you used like uh, I assume like a Game Boy controller. Yeah, GameCube. Sorry, GameCube. Yeah, or <laughs> I'm looking at Game Boy, <laughs> Game Boy. <laughs> but yes, the GameCube controller. Um, would you say that that's kind of like your comfort zone? Like that's your favorite, or you're not sure? I think it's really good for melee, particularly, or well, for games that are made for GameCube and Wii, mm -hmm. but. Uh, if you're trying to play like retro games or something like this, I definitely do not recommend them. But um, fair. there are some people that play Game Boy games, that speedrun Game Boy games with the GameCube controller. I, I find so cursed, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like just, um, I guess, unnatural from playing it for the first time, I guess, with the original controller, probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, um,. Yeah, some people like the like using the actual control stick too for like for movement for these two D for these two D games. Uh, most I don't know anyone that likes the D pad for a GameCube controller though for for games like this because the D pad is really small. Uh, oh yeah, it is kind of like it's like those little yellow buttons or maybe I'm misremembering. Yeah, the C stick's yellow, but the that's that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, D pad's uh, it's gray, but it's like. Tiny. <laughs> it's really small. <laughs> like, oh, I was thinking of N64 controller with the little, you know. Oh, the C button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the little, the little buttons. Yep, 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 yep. I'm not well versed in Nintendo. I'm so sorry. <laughs> ah, it's chill. Oh, I messed up. It's fine. <laughs> I think that probably loses like less than a second. But... <laughs> no, we're, we're fine. We're good. <laughs> I'm gonna so try and change some uh, shine sparks there. Uh, back and forth for a very short distance, but it's like, I don't know, it, it, it's not important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries. Somebody, somebody mentioned Soul Calibur 2 in the chat, which is a game that my sister and I played at the arcade quite a bit. Um, did you ever venture outside of Melee and play other fighter games? Yeah, I didn't play Soul Calibur 2 competitively, but I did play it a lot with one of my best friends who I uh, also was like my regular practice partner for Smash Bros. Melee. Oh, right on. And uh, we played Soul Calibur 2 a ton with each other. Oh, hell yeah. That's fun. <laughs> and um, there's a few other friend groups that also like were like, yo, I'm so good at Soul Calibur 2. And then <laughs> had to go and uh, usually whoop them. But sometimes there's some people that were actually just better than me at the game. But. Now, now I have a serious question for you, Ryan. When you win a game, um, how do you, what's your win style? Do you glow? Do you kind of like play it cool? Good game? Like tell us about, about your experience when you win. Yeah, I definitely try hard not to be a uh, bad winner. So like, <laughs> like, like, like gloating, like gloating, gloating. or. Yeah. <laughs> if, if someone else talks trash first, I'll, I'll definitely clap back. But <laughs> okay. Okay. That's, that's, you know, but, that's the way it should be. But. Definitely uh, tasteful, though, generally. But yeah, I always try to say good game uh, as much as possible as well. Oh, well, that's very polite. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I've, I've done it for so long, so I'm like, I'm definitely used to it. Like, oh, yeah. So, good so games when you were, or GGs, at least. <laughs> when you were going to the tournaments and stuff, like, how many, I guess, matches would you have to do, like, in a day? Oh, it depends on the size of the event, but. Um, sure. If it's like, okay, so if it's just like a local uh, weekly tournament, then um, say if there was around 30 entrants, then, oh, I guess because it's a double elimination bracket, it depends. <laughs> it depends on that too. 
If I manage to stay in the winner's bracket the whole time, then it might be... <laughs> five sets in total? Well, okay. Not a lot. Well, but if you, if you get knocked into loser's bracket early and make like a long run through loser's bracket, you have to play like twice as many matches. Oh my goodness. I guess you have to like kind of build yourself back up and, and prove yourself in, in the tournament. Exactly. And um, it's weird because like staying in the winner bracket kind of like every round that you win kind of like skips one round as well. Oh, that's really bad that I uh, messed up that shot. <laughs> Fine. I went uh, narrowly too low on it, so. Um, I'm getting lost in this happens. level. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, I'm dropping shine sparks all over the place now, too. <laughs> but yeah, uh, this part does can be confusing, though, because of how uh, samey it looks, though. Oh, right, uh, like, easy to get lost in. Yeah, like, this part, it's like... Uh, so every time I'm doing a uh, shine spark in the air, and then um, again when Samus uh, lands on a on a slope, then she uh, will manage to keep her speed booster, and uh, we'll just run with like the oh whoops, just run with like the charged uh, speed booster speed. And, oh, okay. Um, and then you can immediately uh, score a shine spark and then do another one. So, uh, so yeah, that puzzles uh, keeping the shine shine spark all the way up till you get to the top, and then. Um, the uh, blocks uh, where that uh, that item expansion was that I grabbed, uh, it's blocked by speed booster blocks, so you need to keep your speed booster the whole way up there, basically. But then um, the first time I dropped, I bonked the wall with my uh, shine spark on the last on the last <laughs> one, so I had to do it all over again because of that. When when the shine spark is too strong, <laughs> I probably went like. One or two pixels too low or something. And just hit the wall <laughs> instead of the slope. Isn't that the way? Yeah, the classic. Like, it's being a little too eager and like inputting too fast, basically. But hey, mistakes happen. For sure, yeah, no worries about it. I mean, I like to think that Time Capsule is a pretty relaxed show. So, um, those of you watching, thanks so much for tuning in. And, and Ryan, thank you again so much for being here. Like, this has been really fun. Hey, no problem. So yeah, I'm hoping everybody's been enjoying because yeah, I've I've been having a great time. And, like honestly, I haven't been really like try hard commentating the run because <laughs> well, that's <laughs> just okay. kind of vibing, you know. <laughs> yeah, catching up and and telling stories and you know it's it's fun to check in with Samus and see what's going on. But um, but yeah, I think it's been fun. Exactly. I, I think I feel the like... last time. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I said I feel like we must be approaching the end because we've been chatting quite a while now. Very close. Um, so that should have been, assuming I didn't miss anything, that should have been the last item. And um, oh yeah, now there's a ton of dialogue coming up right now. <laughs> All right, it's so, time to decode the dialogue. Yeah. So what what is happening here? Oh, because uh, Samus like disobeyed orders a few times and went into like two different restricted areas. Um, the place that where the gate that said uh, no entry without authorization. Um, it's actually a uh, Metroid breeding lab that was uh, kept hidden. No, oh, no. And um, because Samus eradicated all the Metroids in Metroid Two already, because she was uh given that mission to exterminate all of them on SR388. Then um, yeah, the Galactic Federation has been uh creating new Metroids. Um, uh, Adam here said it's for peaceful applications. Are they authorized but, to do that? Can they do that? Uh, the, the Federation, I guess, can do what they want. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so on top of that, uh, now the next uh, climactic issue is that um, the Federation wants Samus to leave the space station because they uh, uh, basically they, they want to try and capture um, one of the uh, SAXs, which have been uh, asexually reproducing now. So there's apparently at least... 10 SAXs on the ship. What? So. And this all happened in the span of like a few minutes? Yeah, like maybe a few hours even. A few hours, okay. Well. Yeah, so it's even possible that like each of those SAXs I encountered may have been different ones too because of because uh, cause the X parasites all uh, asexually repro reproduce. So do we have oh, to like. I'm, I'm glad someone knows the two. I uh wouldn't do it wouldn't be able to do it justice explaining, but there's a clip on uh 
Oats and Goats channel about him making like <laughs> a random joke about the lore for this game. And, like, says something about like Adam telling her to uh, <laughs> that she can get uh, uh, two hamburgers at the for the price of one. <laughs> and when her eyes opened up in like that uh, that cutscene where her eyes went white um, briefly, then he was like two. Just kind of like with like comedic timing. So. I don't know. The <laughs> clip, pretty... the clip definitely does it. <laughs> does, More justice, does it I'm sure. <laughs> no, it does sound really funny though. I'll have to, I'll have to peek around on uh, Oats' channel later. <laughs> it's so silly. Yeah, he's been recently grinding um, any percent again too. Um, Propulsion sequence. Now that oh, he uh, hit his goal for Super Metroid. Oh, nice. So, so he's actively working on this game. Yeah. Very cool. I think he just PB'd, he has, in any percent, he, he has like a mid-160 in that category. Nice. Which, uh, yeah, a world record though is like... Oh god, I actually forgot what world, re world record is in that category. Honestly, it <laughs> amazes me when anyone remembers seven. stuff like that. Like, how are you supposed to remember that? <laughs> right? <laughs> I think it's like 107 something, but I might be wrong on that. <laughs> Either way, it's it's world record and it's very impressive. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, world record for uh, almost every category in this game. World record is by C. Scotty W. Who, um... Oh shoot, I messed up the. Uh... I was gonna try a swag strat where you can do like a low height shine spark to uh, go through these next two rooms, which uh, it saves like a second. If you get it, but <laughs> you got to go for the swag strats when you can, you know. Yeah, I accidentally used my shine spark and just used it straight up because I uh, grabbed a ledge by accident, so kind of just messed up my movement. <laughs> okay. So yeah, now I'm at uh one HP, but <laughs> one HP and a dream. Welcome back. Do y'all think I'll survive? Or... Okay, I... world records one ten. Oh shoot, that was way off. Oh, wow. Thanks for clarifying. Thanks, Sci Fi. Yeah, thank you, Sci Fi. Yeah, you can stun lock the Omega Metroid, so this guy's the uh, final boss. I know oh, I uh, whoa, skipped okay. the whole SAX fight, but it's okay. I cheese the SAX. <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so time is when uh, this tractor beam touches Samus, and time. Wow, nice. GG. That Thank was you. a really cool run, and honestly, Ryan, I had a blast chatting with you. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, I'm glad. Yeah, for I had a great time, too. Yeah, for sure. Do you have any, like, shout-outs or comments that you'd like to make before we head over to break? Yeah. Okay, one thing's that... <laughs> yeah, this run uh, reminded me of when I was running on a passion project at the start of the year. Um, yeah, me and Amber, we were just, like chilling that I like didn't talk about the run at all during that show <laughs> but I was running a uh, Mega Man X3 for that one <laughs> fun uh, gave me gave me similar vibes where I was just <laughs> you know we were just vibing and talking <laughs> for sure I love I love runs like that yeah same here and um yeah so if, if anyone wants to shoot me a follow I'm at Ryan underscore Ford 522 and um yeah, I run a variety of games. Uh, I've learned about 12, 12 games so far and like over 30 categories combined from all of them. That's an accomplishment. Um, wow. Almost done learning my 13th run, uh, Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages, which um, I've already run Oracle of Seasons for about a year. So um, the games have the same mechanics, but... Um, <laughs> So you're like you know, kind of fine-tuning, polishing it up, getting ready to run it. Exactly. It's kind of like <laughs> learning a new category rather than like a whole new run, I feel. <laughs> yeah, well, I wish you lots of luck in uh, that. And remind us again when your run is, you said you were running for um, Amber's event on Friday? Yeah, for Passion Project. That, uh, yeah, 10 a.m. on Friday Eastern. T 10 a.m. Friday Eastern. Okay, awesome. Well... I hope some of y'all will look forward to that. And if you did have have fun with us here for Metroid Fusion, make sure you follow Ryan here on Twitch. I linked that in uh, the Twitch chat. So there you go, my friends. Hey. But 
Yeah. But, um, before we break, I do want to give a huge shout out to all of our supporters, your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered here on the GDQ Twitch channel does help support the Games Done Quick Hotfix with programming, including this show Time Capsule. So please consider subscribing if you do enjoy our daily Hotfix shows. And uh, if you are curious about any of our other Hotfix shows, you can always check out the stream VODs on our YouTube. That's youtube.com slash games done quick. Uh, Ryan, thank you again so much for being here. Uh, we will be right back with The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. So stay tuned, everyone. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hotfix. I'm your host, Smooth Operative, and you are watching Time Capsule. We are on 2002 games tonight, and we are all set up for Wind Waker. So please welcome our next runner, EJ. Hi. Hi, how's it going? It's good. How are you, EJ? Welcome. Good, good. So yeah, um, this is a run of the Wind Waker SD, which is what we call the GameCube version, as opposed to the HD version on the Wii U. Um, and this is of Noam Assess, and I guess I'll explain a little bit more because we have a lot of intro cutscene time to get through, so sure, I guess I'll just get started. Um, quick note, you may notice that the timer is starting a little bit later than just zero. Um, that's because in our community we have allowed a intro skip where we skip the lore part of the intro cutscene, which is what's on my shirt. Yeah, so we won't be watching that. <laughs> it's um, there in spirit. We, we, we got it. Yeah, no gameplay is skipped. It's just... A couple years back, we decided to just do away with the lower part, and we just get straight to the second cutscene part. So uh, right. I am ready to start. Um, I'll give a countdown from five, on, and then start on go in a couple seconds. So yeah, have my file name in there, and then I'm ready to go in five, four, three, two, one, go. Cool. Awesome. Good luck. Thank you. So yeah, this is any percent gnome assess. Gnome assess meaning no manual super swim. Um, that's the main difference between any percent gnome assess and any percent. Um, there are a couple of different restrictions as well on top of that, so there's no Puppet Ganon skip. Um, basically, there's a boss called Puppet Ganon at the end of the game which is with a really complicated skip, um, but this foregoes that because it's supposed to be the main beginner category of the run. And on top of that, there also is no actor unloading allowed. Um, I'm just not going to explain that. That's a rabbit hole that I do not want to get, uh, <laughs> get into, but yeah, that is the main crux of this category. All right, well, the stage is set. Yeah, and I guess for those who are not familiar with Wind Waker, um, manual super swim is the pause trick at the start of the run that people do for like five minutes. It is very interesting to watch, to say the least. Not very interesting from a spectator perspective, but pretty interesting from like a runner perspective, and it makes the run a lot faster um, because that allows us to get the Wind Waker as soon as possible, which is the most broken item in the game, as you will see. Um, but because we're not doing that, the category is pretty tame for the first like 30 so minutes of the run. Pretty much just going through the game kind of as intended, barring some like little speedrun strats that kind of save a few seconds here or there. Um, but yeah, so pretty tame till then. And just uh, also a quick warning, um, at the 30 minute mark, once we get the Wind Waker, we'll get me doing a glitch called Super Swimming, which is, uh, it kind of introduces a lot of flashing lights. So if you're photosensitive at around the 30 minute mark until like the 55 minute mark, there will be on and off flashing lights. Um, so I will give a warning before that kind of starts again, and then I'll let you know when it's done for the run. For sure, yeah, that'd be helpful, thanks. Mm -hmm. And uh, also feel free to, I'm gonna try my best to explain everything, um, but there's a lot going on, especially at different parts of the run where sometimes, unfortunately, a lot of new things happen back to back to back that make it kind of hard to explain. Um, so feel free to ask any questions or if anyone in chat asks a question, feel free to also read it out to me. Yeah, I'm keeping tabs on the chat. So again, if you if any of you do have questions, feel free to ch chime in. Yeah, um, because we're not doing that manual super sim trick, again, we're going through the intro of the game um, kind of as intended. So what that kind of entails is we're doing this island called Outset Island. We're doing all the introductory stuff, getting that, that all out of the way, going to the first dungeon, the Forsaken Fortress, beating that. And then that's kind of when we kind of open the can of worms and do a bunch of crazy stuff. Um, and that's not to say the outset isn't interesting, though. There are kind of few main things that kind of differentiate it from like a casual character that aren't that big, but um, I'll point them out as we get there. But yeah, basically we're getting the hero's clothes, getting the sword, telescope, getting on the ship, etc., etc. Oh yeah, because don't you have to like kind of set everything up before you go out on your voyage? 
Yeah, we gotta get all of our equipment before we are deemed worthy to go on this grand adventure. <laughs> right on. Gotta, gotta pack the clothes and, yep. and everything else. What's your favorite Link outfit? I like the pajama outfit, which is the one we saw at the start. And fun fact, because Very cute. any percent we do that MSS trick, you actually keep that outfit the entire run should you do that trick, because you never go talk to grandma. <laughs> which is cool. That is cool. Um, and I see a couple more questions just to get ahead of it because I kind of have some free time. Um, I'm playing on Japanese, which you may have noticed. It saves a lot of time. Um, there are some differences version-wise when it comes to like glitches, um, but really it does not really make a difference in this category, nor really in any main speedrun category, um, at least currently, um, with how optimizations are. Um, but just in general, text is super, super slow in English. Like, just alone in this category, that's still only like an hour long, you lose multiple minutes. It is quite bad. Oh, whoa. Yeah. And Wii U version, I alluded that a little bit, alluded to that a little bit at the beginning. And that's referred to the HD version, because that one's called HD. Um, and we call this one SD just for, I don't know, normality's sake, because the opposite of HD. Um, the world record is not significantly shorter, if I recall, it's like a 45 minute speedrun. Um, and this game, our world record is like 51 minutes. Um, the main, they're very different speedruns. Um, for those not familiar, there's a trick called item sliding, which I'm not going to go into that much, because it's not in this game, um, but it is in that game, and that is the main difference that separates these two. So yeah, I just, we just saw a Tetra get dropped into the forest, and now we got to get a sword to save her, because we cannot get to that forest unless we have a sword. Developers made pretty darn sure of that. <laughs> they don't want you skipping too many steps. <laughs> yeah, there's a run. there's a set of trees that you need to get past the cut, but not only is there trees, there's an invisible wall as long as you don't have a sword, which is kind of annoying. So yeah, this is the first kind of speedrun strat that I'm going to try to go for. Well, also in general, this is the sword tutorial. I'm going to be doing specific uh, stick inputs, make the combos go a little bit faster. Um, and then at a certain point, basically it's just making me go through all of the different attacks to learn because I'm a beginner trying to learn all this stuff. Um, and there's going to be a section where it goes over the parry attack, and I'm going to try to hit the parry in a one frame window to kind of skip a little bit of the waiting sequence, but we'll see how that goes. And that'll be after the spin attacks. It's a two frame window, I believe. And, and we're using the term beginner very loosely. Here. Yes. <laughs> because EJ is a professional. <laughs> So I missed it there, unfortunately. Basically, I stand there for a little bit, but had I hit the window, um, it would have immediately let me do the second carry, and it saves a little bit of time. Yeah, no um, worries. But yeah, I guess I am indeed not actually a beginner. I've been running this game for like three or four years at this point. It is my main game, so oh, nice. I am okay at it, I guess. Um, so did you pick it up a little bit before COVID, or was it a kind of COVID game for you? Um... I think it was definitely before that, a little oh, bit okay. before. I think it was the New Year's into that year. Um, okay, right on. I kind of got into I was a spectator for quite a long time. Um, and then eventually I was like, I want to do this myself as well. Um, I kind of bounced around a couple games, uh, trying to decide what I wanted to do. None of them really stuck. And then I thought, oh, what are the games do I like? I was like, oh, Wind Waker. And then I just tried Wind Waker, and it took a long time to learn, because there are a couple tricks that are pretty darn hard to learn. Oh gosh, um, I bet. We'll see them. Well, actually, we'll see <laughs> one of them. We won't see the other. Uh, uh, Manual Super Summon is one of the big ones that are really annoying. Um, the other one is Zombie Hovering, which you, if you are familiar with anything with Wind Waker speedrunning, I'm sure you know what Zombie Hovering is. Now, is Wind Waker kind of a nostalgic game for you as well? Um, yeah, it was my first Zelda game. Oh, okay, um, nice. So definitely up there. Oh, almost fell off there. I'm gonna grab a little rupee hidden over here real quick. Rupees are important for one purchase in the game. In this category. But yeah, this is my first Zelda game, and also my first speedrun. So definitely a little special in my heart. Love, hate, love and hate relationship. Which is... <laughs> I feel like that's how it goes when you start learning a game that you love. Yeah. But now I decided to kill these Bacoblins to progress the story, and hopefully I get a little combo. 
to not get it, unfortunately, but it's fine. I get some extra rupees. There's a little annoying sense of rupees. Yeah, had I have done that uh, combo correctly, I would have hit them with that spin attack, and it would have ended it really quickly. And that's like the second big thing, as a, like alongside the Orca fight, that kind of differentiates this from like a casual playthrough. But yeah, it's okay. Only loses a couple seconds. Not a big deal. Yeah, no worries at all. Yeah. Um, you might have saw that I slashed some grass there for rupees. It's actually a pretty big RNG moment in this run. It doesn't actually lose a lot of time if you don't get a lot, but like, you can get really lucky and it saved a little bit of time in the next couple seconds. Um, so now we are done with this section and pretty much now, well, we're about to see what happens that lets us go on our adventure, but we pretty much almost have everything we need to go. Which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, this game has a lot of cutscenes. Um, some we can skip, which we'll see later, um, but some of these early ones, especially since we don't have the Wind Waker yet, there's really nothing we can do. So you just have to kind of mash through the cutscenes as fast as you can? Yeah, um, in this game, hex mashing, hex mashing does matter. Um, it does go faster. Um, a little bit. Um, it's not too crazy, you know, it's like we're talking about frames here, so it's not... Uh, right, yeah. A little matter. forgiving. Yeah. It's just at the beginning here, because we're doing a lot of the intro stuff, there just is a lot of text. But luckily on Japanese, because they, they like the, this cutscene here that we're watching is like over a minute slower it, on its own in English, which is... That's wild. Ridiculous. The text just moves so much slower. It is crazy. <laughs> um, and wild. random fun fact that doesn't really matter, um, but some games' file name matters. This game, it doesn't. No matter what, no matter what version you're playing, the game will always display the file name in one frame, the entire name in the text box. So you can name yourself anything you want and not lose any time. It's pretty cool. I never really like thought about that for other speedruns. You know, if you have a long name, it's I guess gonna take longer to go through the dialogue normally. So yeah. that is something to consider. Yeah. Definitely still in the order of frames, but some people probably do care about that. Me, right. not so much. Do you always uh, name your file EJ just because it's easy? Yeah, um, I have tried like the classic like Japanese character that looks like the smiley face, but I've always come crawling back to <laughs> Gotta stay true to yourself. Yeah, this is one of the longer text boxes in the game. But once we do this, I'll get the shield and then we can cut off the for second fortress. Now, I'm trying to remember, do you actually have to build the boat, too? No. Um, okay. However, we do have to complete some story elements in order to have it spawn in the overworld, which I will right. explain a little bit. I think that's about there. as far as I got, is building the boat. It's pretty or getting early, to huh? the boat. Yeah. yeah, it's very early. Like, I was dipping my toes in the water with this game. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm just going to get the shield. And regarding that question in chat about the sync to the music, that is a pretty good point. Um, regarding, regarding this cutscene that we just saw, actually, I wasn't really thinking about it, I was kind of autopiloting, but those first couple text boxes actually progress on their own, and your inputs don't matter. So that solves that music issue. Regarding other cutscenes, I've never really thought about it before. Um, I don't think other ones really pay attention to the syncing as much, or like choreograph around it so much. I assume it's been timed probably before, though. Yeah, um, the next cutscene we're about to watch actually also has some time stuff because the first couple text boxes are just automatic. Oh no, did we make Grandma cry? Unfortunately. And then unfortunately also in this category, we never give her the fairy. Bomb. Aww. Oops. Sorry, Granny. I think 100% and like glitchless are like the only other categories that actually save Grandma. And 100%, I think, theoretically, could save time if you skipped, but it's hard. Right. So this is kind of your preferred category, I'm guessing. Um... I... came up learning any percent. Okay. Um, it's a lot more toxic of a run-to-run, run, um, but it has a soft spot. And I ran a pretty special route of it when I came up that I liked. Um... And because I kind of basically, I guess I'm alluding to something later, but there's a thing called barrier skip in this game. 
Um, and I kind of came into the community as that was found, so that was a pretty unique experience. But because of that, um, any percent before Barrier Skip did this, any percent after does not, so I never really had any true attachment to this outset segment of the game in speedrunning. Um, so when this ca this is actually a relatively newer category in the, the grand scheme of the history of the run, or this game, like this category hasn't existed um, for that long. Um, so when it first came out and we did it for fun and we did community races, I was kind of bored of the start. Um, but as I've gotten better at it, I've come to appreciate it more because while it is vanilla gameplay for the most part, you'd be surprised how much time you can squeeze out of it if like you're really optimal and it's really cool to watch. For sure, yeah, and like pathing and everything else matters too, so I imagine you just get better and better as you continue. Yeah. We'll see a pretty good example of movement being important in maybe like three minutes. Right on. So this is uh, what we call Ropes 1. Um, basically, there's these rope mini games that this character Nico makes us go through to get certain items. Um, there are two of them in the game. Um, and this is the first one, so we just call it Ropes 1. And we'll call the other one Surprise Ropes 2. And I'll, you'll, you'll know it when we get there. It's pretty obvious. Appropriate. So pretty much just have to kind of maneuver across these platforms and ropes. Not too hard. Um, falling here is quite of a, kind of a meme in our community when it comes to races, because you should never fall here. Ever. But if you do, people kind of hid with you. It's like the fall of shame, I guess. Yeah, you have to like do the, the, the climb of shame back up the ladder. Also, it and is, the NPC yeah. also yells at you too and makes fun of you for falling. Aww. So, That's, oh, that is actually funny. Happen. It's this NPC here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I let go of neutral. Or I went to neutral. Everything's okay. Yeah, in this game, if you go to neutral on the stick before you do a jump, you'll just ledge grab like that. The ledge is grabbable. So, I didn't lose any time there. I like sniffing in time, but that kind of scared me because I didn't realize I went to neutral. Yeah, and uh, we're here to get the spoils bag. Um, spoils bag is not important for the run at all. Um, and honestly, it could be a detriment because it lets the enemies drop spoils, which have a long text box when you first grab them, so you try to avoid those. However, because again, kind of like a glitchless run through of the first 30 minutes, we have to get this to progress. So, unfortunately, we gotta get the dang bag. Ooh, I like the bag. It's cute. Oh, it's spooky. And maybe noticing I'm like saving and quitting, or not quitting, but like resetting, that's called save warping. I'm um, basically, um, at certain points in the game, the game decides to like put you in a specific spot when you load your save file after a save, and sometimes it's faster to do that instead of walking back. That makes so sense. Yeah, I could have like walked outside, but instead I just walked back outside. So here is what I was talking about earlier, and um, this is very important that I climbed up here fast, went through that text fast, and I go through all the remaining text really fast. Um, there's a thing called early light cycle. So basically, you're about to see right now in this cutscene, there are spotlights at this spooky dungeon. And I'm at, like, this is a cutscene, but this is in game right now. So, like, the cycle that those lights are on are the cycle, and it'll be that same cycle when this cutscene ends. And there are some conveniently placed red rupees that I will want to grab. Um, that are, you can kind of, you barely got a peek of it at the bottom of the screen right there where those lights are pointing. Um, and I want to grab them conveniently at a good time when the lights aren't there. And if I mash fast enough, I can make it a really early cycle that's kind of tight. Um, and if not, I have to wait. And worst case scenario, if I get caught by the lights, um, I get sent to jail. And hopefully that doesn't happen. So I am mashing my little heart out so that I can <laughs> get there at a decent time. And if I make any error in my movement, I'm just going to bail on early light cycle and just do the normal light cycle. Because again, it doesn't really lose that much time, but it's not too hard once you get used to it. So um, this is for second Fortress run 1. I'm going to refer to that as FF1 from now on. And also we come back here again, and those are referred to as different numbers as well. So later we'll come to FF2. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah. That's like your way of keeping track. Yeah, it's just like the in in uh, even in casual gameplay, you visit this place three times and like major story points. So we just as a community dub them like FF1, FF2, FF3 to differentiate them. Right on. That um, makes sense. So this is the first dungeon, quote unquote, of the game. So we're doing it vanilla, so it's kind of like a stealth section where I can't get caught. I don't have a sword. 
Um, pretty much going through it as intended. There is one little exploit we're going to do that we'll see when we get there. But yeah, first and foremost, um, we are going to get those rupees. And also hit a trigger right here, which is important for later. Um, you can skip this, but skipping this would be very bad. And that menu just cuts you right here. We do want it sets a trigger for later um, that is very important. So now I'm going to go through these text boxes, hopefully do a nice turn up these stairs, and get the rupees. Hmm. I think I have to bail. I'm gonna be able to. I'm gonna bail just to be safe. I guess my mashing was not that good, but it's fine. I see what you mean, though. Like it's a bit tricky to time, I guess. Yeah, you can stand the lights a little bit, um, but don't want to risk it. I was kind of scared of doing it there. Uh, I was also gonna go for a window jump there, but I think I messed up the lineup, so I'm just gonna grab it instead. So once you get your sword back, I guess these kind of sections aren't as um, apparent or they don't show up quite as much, these stealth sections? This is pretty much the only one in the game at the okay. start right here. Um, right yeah, you ne you're never put in this situation ever again. Uh, <laughs> and I'm coming up here real quick to kill this Bokoblin because his spotlight would stop me later on in the dungeon if I didn't. So, gotta kill him, unfortunately. Luckily there's a stick here I can use. And now I'm gonna go right back to where I came from, because that's the fastest way to the end. Um, in a second here, we're gonna come across the enemies called Moblins, which have lanterns, and those guys can catch me and throw me in jail also, in addition to the spotlights. But there's some conveniently placed barrels that let me hide from them, and that's intended so that when you're in the barrel, you can't get caught. However, they added a little kind of a beginner-friendly feature where they, for a brief period outside of the barrel you don't get caught so we can exploit that to run past them also i sidled into the door there hit the loading zone a little funny thing yeah i was gonna say that is kind of a funny little thing see so yeah, i'm gonna grab this i get my little invulnerability and now i can just run past them i can't get that close to them still okay this is kind of scary Ooh. So yeah, you, it's kind of RNG when they turn around, um, but luckily I can hide behind that little wall there. If that wall wasn't there, it would be a lot worse. Um, and there's just one more of those guys that have to get past, and we'll see. It'll be pretty apparent right now that I'm just running past them. This guy can also have some RNG, so hopefully he's not too bad. Okay, good. And now I can just run past them. Again, an intended feature, but they kind of didn't realize how broken they made it. So now we're pretty much done. Just got a sidle to the end. And in this game, uh, I'm not just holding the direction, I'm tapping the direction, because for whatever reason, if you tap the direction, you go ever so slightly faster. That's pretty cool. And right around this corner, we're about to get my sword again, and then we'll be done with the dungeon. Yeah, that's correct. The world record is a 111 something by Chaotic Ace, who is really, really, really good at this game, and has been playing this game for a lot longer than I have. Yeah, I had to double check this. Um, it looks like the seconds are 39, so there you go, chat. He got that somewhat recently. Definitely less than a month or two ago. Oh yeah, this was a recent submission. So I guess this game is um, pretty busy. This board is honestly big <laughs> it's big um it's not the most active 3d zelda game that's for sure um but definitely some diehards that run the game um, <laughs> but yeah gotta respect the the hustle yeah so we finished that this is actually the cutscene that spawns the boat so you have to watch this cutscene to beat the game in fact because uh, there's a lot of complicated flags and stuff in the background of the code of the game, but if you don't have the boat, which is the King of Red Lions, which I'll shorten as Coral from now on, um, we will crash later on. So, I, there is a way around it, but that's beyond the scope of this run in commentary. <laughs> and will totally probably okay. never be done by a human. Well, maybe that's bold to say, you never know. I mean, yeah, I guess time time will tell. But yeah, for, with, for humans, you gotta spawn the boat. Very important. 
Um, and this kind of leads, so now we're almost at the point where we're going to be able to do actual glitches. Um, and it's going to get really, really crazy, like back to back to back, like new things are going to pop up. It's going to be hard to explain. So I'm going to jump a little ahead. Um, basically, now that we are about to get the Wind Waker, the goal after that is get all the items we need to beat the game and then go to the end of the game. Um, so the first one after Wind Waker is we want bombs. Um, and bombs we get from the pirate ship from the Ropes 2 minigame, which is the second iteration of the Ropes 1 minigame we played recently. Um, and vanilla, you gotta do a bunch of stuff, or casually you have to do a bunch of stuff to spawn the boat in that state. However, for some reason, um, when you beat this dungeon for the first time, you are put on a special layer of the overworld in which the boat is at the starting island and we can enter it. And because we got the, the first minigame out of the way and also got that cutscene at the start of FF1, it's in the bomb state. We can just get the bombs. However, I cannot reload the overworld at any point between now and then, or else that boat is gone forever. Because I will be oh off that goodness. special layer. That sounds scary. It is kind of scary, but it shouldn't really become a problem. And even if it does, in a worst case scenario, there is a backup to force spawn the ship that we see in any oh, percent. Okay. Um, but it's just not faster in this category. But if you lose the boat, I guess it's kind of game over. If I what? Sorry? If you lose the boat and, like, don't get it back, it's kind of game over. So, this is a little bit of a spoiler. Um, we will use the boat a little bit right now, but we won't be using the boat much at all. Oh, okay. Um, and we're getting a little close to the photosensitive section of the game. I would say another, like, four-ish minutes. And that will persist for about, like, 25-ish minutes. Um, so now, um, you can't really understand what... The NPC saying, but he's telling me to buy the sail so we can go to the next island, which is where the Wind Waker is. Um, so that's what I was getting the rubies for. And I'm going to get a couple more to top myself off, because I need 80. And then once I get the sail, I will be leaving immediately. So these cutscenes just about done. And then now I'm just going to get the sail and dip. And this is where I'm going to get ahead of myself a little bit again. So once I get the Wind Waker, the main glitch I'll be using is called storage. Um, very complicated trick in a lot of applications that we're going to see back to back to back to back. Um, basically, long story short, this game has a single bit in the game that's set to zero or one, depending on if you're in a cutscene state or not. Um, and using storage, you can trick the game into being the opposite one when you're in a cutscene. So you can have gameplay movement during a cutscene. Um, I skipped the routine actually. Let me go back here. But I got lucky too with the RNG there. So, yeah, basically, we're going to trick the game's cutscene states and get some pretty interesting event interactions. One of those being camera lock, um, which lets us do super swimming. I mean, I'll explain that a little bit later, but now I got the thing. Let's say it'll equip that. Come back to the boat. And we're head off. Again, swords a little. I think explaining it is a little out of the depth. Of this also, I'm probably not doing it justice when I explain it that well, so I will skip that for now. But the main things we'll see, these will sound like words for now, but we'll use text storage, double storage, chest storage, cancel cutscenes with it. It is very broken, and we'll see that <laughs> very soon. It comes in handy. Yeah. So yeah, I have the sail this out on it here. And you notice I'm doing jumps, and that's because when you first uh, pull out the sail, you get a little boost, and then it dies off immediately, and you go to your, like, settling speed. But if you just chain them over and over, you can keep that little boost over and over and over again, and it goes a little bit faster. And you can either pump or jump. I usually opt to pump because I'm not that very good at sail jumping. Yeah, you can kind of notice if you look a little close at the waves the boat is making, they kind of stutter a little bit, or, like, jump a little bit. And that's me getting ever so slightly. Oh yeah, it's very subtle. I'm knowing this game actually just broke the sub six barrier, which is really cool. Nice, yeah. yeah it I was mean, done six... by many, many like a month or two ago. Yeah, I mean, six hours though is a behemoth of a run. I'm not yeah, sure. I... Yeah, <laughs> I could handle it. I have never run it, and I don't know if I will. It's a little crazy. That that's totally fair. Okay, this is the Wind Waker cutscene in which we get the Wind Waker. And now the game is about to break open, I'm about to get storage, 
hex storage, double storage, and chest storage for the first time all at once. A lot of words. It's hard to explain them all. Basically, I can store text and that has properties. I can store a chest that has properties. I'm going to kind of forego explaining storage and text storage and more explain chest storage because that's a very, you can see the effects of that very visually. Um, but basically what I'm going to do after getting uh, the Wind Waker here is I'm going to get storage, store Coral's text, um, get storage again to get double storage um, so I can have storage while super swimming and then I'm going to go and store a chest and then I'm going to go to the ship and climb it because chest storage changes your collision. And that's a lot of words, so I'm just going to let the gameplay do its magic, I guess. <laughs> and you can notice the game's a little fuzzy here. That's just something that happens. I don't know why. This cutscene, the fidelity drops a little bit. But bam. Uh, photosensitive warning starting now. And I'll stay when it's over. Now I'm equipped. Oops. I'm gonna do a Windmaker dive, which is how we get storage. Did not get storage there. Kind of hard to notice when I get it. But there, I got it. If you caught it, it looked a little weird. Store his text. You notice I talked to him and nothing happened. Now I have text all gameplay. Whoops. Okay, I ate his text up to redo it. A little annoying, but everything is okay so far. I have storage with text up, and when I close the text, I get storage back. Now I have storage while super swimming, and now, flashing screen, I'm gaining speed every single frame. Basically, I'm charging infinite negative speed. That's what super swimming is. And then now I have enough. I'm now going to shoot towards a random chest that is convenient to get. Oh, this is bizarre. And now I still have storage. Whoops. And now I'm going to store this chest. Um, interesting property of this chest, storing it makes it go black. Um, it'll come back in a second. Um, don't worry. Once I leave this quadrant, I will get it back. So now I have oh. chest storage. That affects your collision, so you can get air refills off of things you normally shouldn't, because you have finite air in this game. And also you can climb up things you shouldn't, so we'll see that first one right now. I'm gonna hit this pillar real quick. I missed it, but it's fine. Can just go into it, hopefully. There you go, I got an air refill. You see my air meter went back up. And now I have enough speed. I am now going to head towards my destination, which is all the way across the map. But because I'm going so fast, I will get there in a jiffy. Oh my god, that is an island I do not want to hit. So is there a map? How do you know where you're going? So I, you can see I, I can pull up a map to give myself a general check of where I'm going. However, okay. eventually when you run this game for long enough, you just know. <laughs> Okay, um, okay. So now, pirate ship I mentioned is here. And luckily, because you have chest storage, you give us a refill. And also, because you have chest storage, I can just go on the side. Go on the side, I said. Am I in the wrong corner? No, okay, we're good. Uh, this is kind of annoying. There you go. I can just walk up the side. And then, bam. I am in the area for bombs. Wow. Very impressive. That was wild to behold. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, that's the thing I mentioned where if I voided out at any point and reloaded the overworld, that ship is gone. So that scary part is done, thankfully. Nice. And now this is Ropes 2, a slightly harder version of Ropes 1. Although, ironically, we like to say that Ropes 2 is easier, but that's only because we do it more often in speedruns. But it is harder. And in that chest, we have bombs. And after this, we'll get the leaf. Very, very broken items. So just gonna do a little bit of a setup to do this first jump here. I'm gonna wait, I messed up a little bit. I missed the swing cycle there, but I would rather miss the swing cycle than miss the jump. Personally. And now I'm going to time A press to get a little bit of a re-grab there to gain momentum, so I don't have to do an extra swing. I'm going to do it one more time here. So you'll notice I do a little stutter when I let go. Re-grab, and then I get some speed, and then I go. Okay. 
Yeah, so this is the first item. We'll be getting two more items before we go to the end of the game. Um, and we're going to get the leaf now. That is at the fourth, uh, what is that place called? Forest Haven. However, that island has a cutscene around it. And if we swim into it with that locked camera, that special camera you see when I do storage, um, and get camera lock, I will soft lock. So I'm going to have to get double storage to eat that cutscene while swimming. And we'll see it. It's a little weird. Um, but it'll, I think it'll visually make sense. Because usually when you come to these big main islands of the game, it just has a cutscene to show you like a dramatic, like a cinematic shot of the whole thing. Um, those pesky little things, but we can skip it. I Otherwise, think it would be hard to remember all of this. Um, yeah, I would say like, so, but you do it I enough. Can, I guess, like, how much storage you have and, like, where yeah. you can and cannot go, like, was it challenging to put all of that together? Um, I don't think so. I think it's just more, uh, more complicated when you don't really know what's happening, and once you learn okay. it, it's pretty simple. As opposed to, like, I don't know if you're familiar with, like, Skyward Sword speedrunning, learning that is, uh, <laughs> experience, which I've done recently. Very confusing. I think this is pretty tame compared to this. I'm trying to get double storage. Okay. There you go. So now, because I have double storage, I can swim into that cutscene without soft walking. And you'll notice when I get to the island, um, I'm going to, like, kind of zip to a some seemingly random position, but that just needs, like, warping to the start of the cutscene location, but because I have storage, it cancels it, so... You'll see that in a second, so now I'm going to... Head towards Forest Haven, which is somewhere over here. There it is, those two little islands. Well, they're not little, they're pretty big. But they were little silhouettes, but now they're huge. And now <laughs> I've eaten the cutscene, I warped to a starting position, and now I can just go back to what I was doing. And now I need to get inside, but there's some items I need usually to get inside. However, I'm just going to use our pal Beetle right here. Um, so jump on him, get a Wind Waker dive. If I can initiate it. One day. There you go. Cancel it, and now I'm underwater. We click into the island. And now in this game, similar to like a lot of Nintendo games, I guess well, I'm not really familiar with a lot of them, but like some Mario and some Zelda games, when there's a body of water above you, you just snap to it. So if there's a body of water up here I want to get to, I'll just go under it and I'll snap up to it. Very convenient. Oh yeah, that is. And now I'm going to damage down, because now I'm getting ready to do a zombie hover. Um, basically, when you die in this game, you have like a 10 frame window where you can do an action. You can do a jump attack. And in this game, it cancels the jump attack frame one when you die, because it realizes you're dead, but you gain enough height where you can chain them over and over and over again before dying. Um, so you can, inf you can get infinite height, and we'll see that in a second. But first, there's another trick called Deku Tree Cutsuit Skip. So normally, you help the Deku Tree out here, and you this cutscene you watch, and then bam, you get the leaf. However, that cutscene's long and annoying. So instead, I'm going to do some shenanigans to skip it entirely. And it saves like a minute, but it could be quite difficult. So, it's gonna look really weird. Basically, I'm using storage to skip it. I'm gonna start the fight with the shoes with storage to put them in a weird state where I can push them out of bounds to kill them, quote unquote. And when you kill them all, the cutscene starts. So I'm gonna save all but one, push them out in a certain way so that I can get crushed by the deputy's chin at a, sp like a specific time to get crushed as the cutscene starts and then it'll cancel. Um, again, a lot of random words I just said, but I'll just do it. <laughs> and then surely it'll all make sense. Yes. I'm having trouble getting storage. Wow. Okay, so now I'm at the walk there because I have this annoying text that I can't ignore. Wow. There you go. So again, it looks like I'm just grabbing that ledge over and over again, but I promise I am doing something. Um, so now I have storage again. These chews are in a weird state. I can't hurt them, they can't hurt me, but I can push them out of bounds. Eventually, they will hit the void plane and despawn, and that counts as them being defeated. So I use that to time to defeat the last one, and that's the main kind of thing that makes this trick work, is a consistent way to decide when the last chew dies. And there's what? a party over here. A lot of them. This is wild. Yeah, I'm gonna be a little bit safe. Actually, uh, I want... The right one actually. I do that okay, so now I have the last one. Um, I'm going to line up. 
So I should get crushed at the right time, hopefully. We're good. I'm standing up in the water. I skipped the cutscene. Basically, it's supposed to be like a long cutscene, but because I avoided when it happened, we're all good. The leaf is up there now, and now I'm gonna do a zombie cover. Hopefully, I don't fail. I'll be a little safe on the positioning. So I am matching really fast to make the clap. Well, not well. Somewhat fast. I think my average is about like 12, 13 times a second, but you can go as fast as 15. And I am just infinitely gaining height. And you may be wondering why I'm doing this. You can see that little pole in the background, the top left. That is a grapple hook pole that is required to normally um, get to the leaf. And usually that's no problem because this is the second area of the game, or like second main area after like all the intro. Um, but because I skipped that, I do not have the grab look, so I have to do this to get the leaf. And I will die at the end, but it's okay. Um, I don't need to be here any longer after this. Um, and next part, I'm going to get the quiver, and we're going to see a pretty insane development that's happened pretty recently, and also a new setup that was found like two days ago that I learned yesterday. And hopefully it goes well. Oh, I got the leaf. That's pretty cool. This guy's going to talk to me real quick. I'm out of here. I don't need to be here anymore. Um, I could death warp here. I chose to save warp. It's a little bit faster to save warp. I could have let myself die and then death warp, but... Whatever you do. So now I'm gonna do a... Crazy thing. Um, we used to get chest storage and then go to the quiver spot and clip in and get the quiver. However, we have found a way to skip the chest storage entirely with a consistent setup, which is kind of crazy. Hopefully it goes well. I learned this setup yesterday. Pretty confident, but you never know, I guess. A little inconsistent. Sometimes based on reloading times. Okay. I think I did the position set up correctly. And I hope I can time this properly. I'm gonna pay attention to the audio for a bit. Now, it'll be pretty obvious when I'm doing it. So I did a set for a specific angle and position, and hopefully I will go right into the loading zone before it loads the vines. Oh, thank god. And then I just clipped in before- so basically the island was partially loaded, usually there's some vines there, and uh... You usually- wow. you chest storage, like clip inside the wall, but instead you can just do that, and historically, um, we used to- that, that setup wasn't really like a- I guess approach that people thought of, of consistently doing like spinning super swim charging because it was just not something people thought of. Um, and before we kind of just YOLO that and it would be like a last ditch effort to like save a dead run. But now we have a consistent way to do that every time. Um, it, it's a little weird because unfortunately it kind of depends on like your specific Wii if it works or not sometimes because you want the island to be partially loaded, not fully loaded, and at the same time not, not loaded at all. And if your Wii loads faster or slower, there can be some inconsistencies with that. Kind of unfortunate, but it's still a really cool trip. I pulled the wrong item. Wind Waker speedruns are, like, on another level. This is very interesting. Yeah, this is a very... hard run at times. There you go. I was getting storage off of that. Usually we do Wind Waker dives, and, like, off of ledges, but sometimes you gotta get a little creative with your terrain. Um, but yeah, again, it may look daunting, um, but I highly recommend people giving it a shot if you're interested. We also have bug limit or glitchless categories if you're not a fan of glitches. Um, they're a little bit longer, but yeah, this is, this is definitely the most beginner-friendly glitched category. And it may look taunting or daunting, but also there are beginner-friendlier routes that you can give a shot. And they kind of skip the more complicated tricks. Loses a little bit of time, not too much. Nice, yeah, I do see a couple of guides here on the speedrun.com board, so if yeah. anyone's interested, yeah, check it out. I think the best place to go is probably the Discord, which is also linked on the speedrun.com. That's where a lot of 
the resources are fully up to date. And we also have a practice ROM that was recently made. Pretty cool. Oh, cool, yeah. Um, so I'm now we're going to the end of the game. We got everything I needed. So I'm just getting a chest here for chest storage to climb up stuff again. This is just the most convenient one to get to. No particular reason it doesn't mind. Um, so now another chest for it to become dark for a little bit. So. Uh, I blanked a little bit on the inputs for a second. But we are A-OK. -okay. So now I'm going to charge yeah, a little bit more. Hopefully not hit the island, because that could be kind of annoying. Yeah, the great... Uh, I guess I didn't really explain, because you can't really tell. Or maybe you didn't really tell, but that fairy gave me the quiver. Oh, I splooshed. That sucks. It's fine. Um, that fairy gave me the quiver, um, which is not the bow. Um, so I still don't have the bow. I do have a quiver, though. However... I'm gonna get an item later that also isn't the bow, but it's the it's an arrow of some sort, if you can guess which one it is. And the combination of a quiver and arrows pretty much just gives you the bow. So we'll be using that exploit to basically get the bow without actually having to get the bow. Because in this game, the bow is in the third dungeon of the game, and it, it's quite lengthy to get to that point. Um, so yeah, I got chest storage, got the quiver, the bow, or not the bow, the quiver, the leaf, bombs, and the wind waker. I'm getting the heck out of here. <laughs> um, and this is Forsaken Fortress 2. This is the second interest. So this is the same dungeon as the start of the game. Um, there's a rock here that's kind of annoying. Um, Forsaken Fortress 1 is on its own special map, and FF2, or Forsaken Fortress 2, is on the overworld. So I can just come straight here. And because I have chest storage, I can clip there. And more egregiously, because I have chest storage, I can just do the following that you're about to see. Where I just walk up all the walls and go straight to the end. Don't have to do anything. And this is because when you store a chest in this game, when you see Link do like the animation of climbing into the chest, the game changes its collision to be able to do that, actually. Um, and if you store the chest, that, that change in collision is never undone. Um, so you can just abuse that. And it persists until you either open another chest or do some sort of loading zone. Yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah, it looked very cool as well. Um, so yeah, this is the end of Forsaken Fortress 2. And conveniently, beating Forsaken Fortress 2 puts you in Hyrule, which is very close to the end of the game. Um, but basically, we're just trying to get to Hyrule as fast as we can. And another fun fact, uh, this game has things called animation sets, which is basically a set of animations used for cutscenes that is split up between a 1 and 2, and basically early game and late game cutscenes. And this is the cutscene that switches the animation set. And because end game cutscenes and like the very last cutscene is animation set 2, this cutscene is required to beat the game. Like hard required. There, even if you skip it, there is no way to beat the game. And you can't skip it, but yeah, gotta be. <laughs> and funny, you're supposed to have Master Sword here, and she's like, how do you have that? But I don't have it, so she's just looking at a random sword. Yeah, after this, there'll be a Helmroth boss fight, which is the big bird that we saw earlier in multiple cutscenes. Um, however, if you're familiar with the game, uh, we, we don't have the item to beat the bird, so uh, we got to take care of that in some other way. And also, there's kind of a fun scrap we can do here that definitely won't save me any time, but looks really cool. And I'm going to try to go for it. Uh, let's see though. Basically, there's a big spiral we have to walk up, but you can do a pretty cool super swim up it. Um, if you're able to get storage on a pretty hard spot. But if I, I'm gonna go for the storage, if I don't get it, I don't get it. But if I do get it, I'll try to show off the swim. Pretty cool. And if I fail it, I'm just gonna walk up, because it's pretty hard. I practiced it a little bit for fun, but I'm not too married to the idea of being stuck here for like... <laughs> Multiple minutes doing something I don't have to do. That's fair. So honestly, I think this runs on a pretty- I can't see, like I don't know what my pace is right now, but I feel like it's pretty good. My PB doesn't have that quiver swim setup strat implemented yet, so... Oh wow, Definitely okay. Definitely saved a lot of time there. 
You know, because of that, uh, you know, fine, I'll, I'll go for it. I'll just say because of that, I won't go for it, because I can maybe <laughs> can PB, but I'll go for it. Of course I got it. Okay. There we go. I'm going for it, I guess. Against my own wishes. Put on okay. a show, Link. Hopefully, I do not sploosh here. Of course I did. This game is awesome. Um, I'm losing some time here, unfortunately, but it's fun. Why not? Oh my god. Okay. Oh, man. Um, okay, I failed it. It's fine. <laughs> I'm just not going to go for it again. No, but it looked really, really cool, actually. Basically, I'm just trying to, like, spin the, the thing, but I, I moved my stick a little bit too much. Listen, um, that was the preview, y'all. If you want to see see more, you're going to have to follow EJ125 yeah. here on Twitch. Exactly. But now I'm going to do the lame walk-up. But you'll see why it's not as cool. I just got to walk up. Unfortunately, I lost a lot of time there. Um, there's an RNG point at the end that I hope, in a deep, deep, dark corner of my heart, hope goes poorly so that even though I did this stupid mistake, I wouldn't PB anyways. Maybe I still could, I don't know. Is it one of those things where it's like, you, you don't want any mistakes in your PB if you can help it? No, I think it's because if I were to get the good RNG at the end, had I not done this, maybe I could have PB'd. I see. You can't think like that, though. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta try. So now I'm up here. There's spikes in the way, but that's not gonna stop me. Taking some damage. I mean, I'll explain why in a second. But first, I'm going to go in here. Do a weird camera setup so that I can grab the ledge in a certain way, clip in the ground, go under here, and then skip the boss fight. Um, the reason why I got damaged down, because when you're at beeping heart health, you get put in a state called critical health, which for some reason very, very, very slightly changes your collision, and it makes it easy to clip into that full corner. It was a cool skip, though. Yeah, that uh, is very nice. There are multiple ways to do that skip. That is the fastest way here. Okay, so we beat FF2, and beating FF2 sends us the high rule, and usually that's like, I guess, what you'd call the halfway point of the game in a casual sense, because there is a giant barrier of very, very historical significance that stood in the way for many years. However, um, spoiler alert, you can skip it. So we are near the end of the game, but because we can do barrier skip, we can go to the end of the game when not intended. Um, we will see that in like, maybe like five minutes. A couple cutscenes here, unfortunately. And uh, you may notice I have Master Sword now. Um, I never got it. You're supposed to get it in Hyrule. However, um, this cutscene is supposed to happen way after the first time you get the Master Sword. Um, so the game just gives it to you because it thinks you're supposed to have it. So that's kind of cool. I now have the Master Sword. Which is nice because it does, I think, double damage. I think that's right. And had you not had a shield, it'd also give you the hero's shield. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, this is the part where... If it was in English, you would know that this is Zelda. Uh, yeah, this is the same exact Gandorf. This is... Uh, uh, we skipped it because of intro skip allowed for this game, but the introduction cutscene goes over like the lore of like Gandorf coming back after losing an Ocarina of Time. Oh, weird. So it does like clarify. That's funny. Yeah. This is a direct sequel to Operating of Time. I remember that boss being a little confusing 
in Ocarina of Time when you meet Ganondorf. Oh yeah, I haven't done that one in like forever, but I think it's really fun. <laughs> yeah. It's like a bunch of pictures or something. Oh yeah, the Forest Temple, like the Phantom Ganon Forest Temple. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. the one. I think like one of them looks like slightly different than the other. I don't know. I have not done that in quite some time. Yeah. So, we escaped, and now we're gonna go down to Hyrule through this portal that isn't supposed to be here, but is supposed to be in this cutscene, so... Also, the dragon looked like he was sitting on nothing. There's supposed to be a giant tower spawned here. We never spawned it, but he was just sitting on nothing. And he's out of here. Okay, so yeah, now we're going down to Hyrule. Just a little bit more of cutscene, then we get back into gameplay. And the very first thing we're doing is the Fabled Barrier Skip, so that'll be uh, very cool. There are multiple <laughs> setups to do. Wait, uh, what was that? Sorry. I was gonna ask you, EJ, you know, last run we touched a little bit on like hand health and stuff. Like, how, how are you when you have to mash this all the time? Like, um, do you do hand stretches or how, how do you handle it? So. I think, personally, for me, zombie hovering is not really that taxing on my arms or hands. It was when I was learning, but once I, like, formed my technique, you really don't need to go as fast as it seems. Okay. Um, so that's pretty chill. Um, there is another trick in this game. So manual super so much I alluded to is what is banned here. There is an unbuffered version that can really mess with your hand health, and I've, like, had to wear a brace on my wrist because of it. Oh, wow. That one is dangerous to do without any self-control um but like mashing and zombie like zombie hovering and like normal manual super swim um people definitely can have hand health concerns but i think as long as you like are mindful of how hard you go at it when you start you should hopefully not come across any issues and if you are most likely you're not doing something wrong but maybe doing something that maybe could be fixed with a little better hand posture or something gotcha yeah, barrier time. Um, basically, there is a small seam that just happens to be where we can access on the barrier. And with a perfect position, angle, and bomb drop frame, we can just push right through it. That very simplifies it a lot. But basically, I'm trying to get damage no or knockback cancel here so that I can stand inside the knockback portion of the barrier, which is taking some time, unfortunately. There you go. Now I'm in this side, but it's still an invisible wall. Hopefully, if that was good, my position is correct, and I'm gonna do a little bit of an angle setup here. It looks kind of weird, but basically, when you do a full 360 turn, your angle slightly changes, so I'm not just spinning in circles for nothing. Um, I kind of forgot how many times I turned there, but hopefully, I think it's fine. We'll find out real quick. And now I'm gonna try to drop a bomb in a specific frame. And bam, I just cut through the barrier. Wow. Good job. Link really um, put his uh, whole neck into that one. Yeah, it looks hard, <laughs> and it is often said that that trick is hard, I think, from like an outside perspective, but I think really it's just one of those scary tricks that look daunting to learn, but once you learn it, it's relatively simple. And there are Very way cool. easier setups to do than what I just did. There's a way more consistent setups. Um, who discovered this skip? So there are two ways to do it. Um, actor loading, which I alluded to a long time ago, I will not go into depth, but it was discovered by, I think, Dragonbane, I believe, and some help from Legend of Link. And then this method, the bomb push method, was discovered by research from a person called Trog and a person called Bowser's Board. And this, these were both found, like, 2019, 2020. So before this, 90% was, like, four-ish hours. Oh, whoa, you could that's, not... like... Why a time save? Yeah, because you had to get here normally, which required getting the fully charged Master Sword, which required beating all dungeons. So before Barrier Skip, there was no all dungeons category. That was just any percent. Very now cool. There is all dungeons. Um, I'm going to do a safe... So now there's a trial room here. Normally you have to do all the trials and like fight all the bosses over again, but uh, that's slow, and we can't even do it anyways if we wanted to. 
I'm gonna do some parkour to skip the trials. Um, wait, my magic was not cool. I, I wasn't paying super attention to the creation of the magic. Was not cool. I might just waste the time getting a reason, but I do not remember it. But I'd rather play it safe. Okay, yeah, my magic was definitely lower, so I think I made the right call there. I don't know how it was different than usual, but interesting. So yeah, you can climb on these posts. And now I'm gonna go on this door frame. I'll fix my quips real quick because I'm used to something else. And then now I will do something called a bomb push, or a ledge flip with a bomb. Clip into the- oh god, my camera is so messed up. I don't know why I did that. Oh god. And I can clip out of bounds and just go to the loading zone of the trial door that's supposed to unlock at the end of all the trials. Um, if in chat, if they're asking why I was running back and forth from like the spot, I was just trying to get magic and then do all that stuff, but then I realized I didn't grab enough, so I had to, I had to run back again. Okay. I made a little bit of a silly mistake. I don't know, I wasn't really paying super attention to my magic. Usually I just autopilot that part, so I guess I just didn't realize. Um, usually you can do a trick called a ledge clip, or not a ledge clip, my bad, a roll clip on the right side of that room on a ledge below the door. Um, it saves quite a bit of time, but it's frame perfect, and it's fine. Um, it's not that bad, I just would prefer to do that, because I think it's it's an easier strap to show off. It looks harder, but and it has more components, but I think it's easier. Yeah, I feel like sometimes you just kind of get in the habit of doing something, and then you're not really thinking about, is it easier, is it harder, you're just kind of doing it, because yeah, that's what you're used to. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's just what you're used to, what you're comfortable mm -hmm. with, even if it loses time. Like that loses like I think like 12 seconds, 15 seconds compared to optimal strats, but I don't really mind too much. I just like to get runs through. Yeah, I mean, I think it if you go like all out, sometimes it's easy to get your spirit broken uh, by <laughs> yeah. a speed run, so that's fair. Okay, so there's an RNG attack you can do there. That was the fastest one, so that's good. Basically, this was the Phantom Ganon maze. Um, luckily, the order and the path you go is the same every time, so I wasn't just guessing. I knew where to go. Um, and this is the light arrows. So, a lot of things here. This is an endgame item, we got it now. Pretty broken. Um, this gives you also fire and ice arrows, because you're supposed to have them by now. Just nice. And also, because we have quiver from before, in combination with these light arrows, I now have an actual bow and arrow, which is nice, because we need that to beat the game. Well, in this category, you need it to beat the game. Right. You can beat the game without light arrows. So now you have to kill this guy, get his sword, and you can break that door. Um, there are ways to skip, again, getting light arrows and skipping breaking this door. And I could do it for fun, but it loses time in this category. And I do need to get the light arrows anyways. So. Yeah, it actually, um, like, all dungeons in 100% get light arrows fairly early on because of barrier skip early on. And it trivializes a lot of somewhat endgame fights because you just have light arrows you're not supposed to. You can like you pretty much one shot mini bosses because that's what it does to them. I did not mean to pick that up. Oopsies. So we're nearing the end of the game. Two more boss fights and one pretty heavily annoying RNG section. Basically, the TLDR is we need to get to a certain spot at the end of the next room that we need grappling hook for. We don't have grappling hook, so um, we have to do a trick that's RNG and is a one in third chance of working. And if it doesn't work, we gotta do it again and again and again and again. And oh, so wow, hopefully it okay. happens. Um, there is a backup that I can opt to do um, that'll make it not RNG, but it loses like a minute. So hopefully that's not the case. How many tries do you usually give it before you like move on? Um, it depends on the pace I'm on, I think. Like if PB is possible with the backup, maybe I'll go for the backup. Right. Okay. Um in a marathon or race setting, definitely what I would like in a race setting we had a tournament like maybe like a year ago where if you didn't get it first try, you just do the backup to hopefully not like assuming that you wouldn't get it next time, just getting the RNG over with. Right. Um, so yeah, but before I have to do that, I have to fight Puppet Ganon, which is a pretty much just a boss where you have to snipe the tail 
Um, usually, you're supposed to break. Basically, it has a weak spot. It's weak to light arrows, and it's like on puppet strings. You have to knock them down and then shoot it on the ground. Uh, we don't have the boomerang to knock it down, so we just gotta snipe them. Which is kind of hard, but once you get used to it, honestly, it's easier than fighting the boss casually. Because I swear, when I accidentally break the ropes, I cannot hit it on the ground like you're supposed to. Literally impossible. Um, so yeah, there's three phases, three shots each. Hopefully my snipes are good. If not, it's pretty easy to lose a lot of time here. And you can also die here, although that really shouldn't be a scare ever. But yeah, I just... Um, phase one is the hardest, I would say from like a speedrun perspective, because it's a lot harder to snipe those than the rest. So hopefully it goes well. I warmed up a little bit before this because yesterday I did a run and I lost like a minute here. Because I could not <laughs> hit the tail. You got this. Yeah, hopefully. And even if I don't, yeah, still pretty, I, I'm pretty happy with this run so far. Barring yeah, that one Helm Rock swim troll <laughs> I kind of did, uh, been pretty good. Nice, that's a quick snipe you can do right there. Consistent. Nice. Look at that, it was kind of a shot that had wishful thinking. There, that was that was a pretty good uh, that was a pretty good shot for first phase, I would say. Missed one shot. I am happy with that. And now ideally should be smooth sailing from here. Yo, what's up, Dean? How's it going? Is it tough to line those shots up? Like, I didn't see any kind of, like... Um, you kind of just have to get used to the tail movement. It's, the tail movement's consistent. Right, okay. It's the body movement that's inconsistent. Um, so the body movement can be kind of annoying, but, like, you can kind of... tail where you think the tail's gonna go, and then shoot there and hope that it hits. Oh, okay. So this one's a little bit easier. I'm gonna go for a two-shot here. Hopefully I get it. Thinking ahead. Did not get it. I'm gonna go for it one more time now for you. But you can hit the shot, you can hit the tail again in the sky, assuming you can shoot both at the right time. If not, I'll do an extra cycle, it's kind of unfortunate. Got it, cool. And now the last phase, which is what I always thought was the hardest casually, but once you know how it works, it is really easy. You can do a lot of things to make it easier. So now I don't have enough magic to miss again, so I'm going to play it a little bit safe, and... Damage down as well. I need damage down for something in a little bit. Oh, he tricked me. He looked like he was... Oh my god, he is... Hilarious. There you go. Cool. Well, Slippery that. one. Yeah, it's really annoying when it <laughs> looks like he's gonna com like, complete the circle, then does like a figure eight instead. Wait, what's like, the, the fake out. Yeah, alright, so that's that. So this is the RNG section. So basically, um, there are two levels of platforms I have to climb. One of them, I can skip the grapple hook check. The other one, I can't. That requires me to shoot an enemy from below, with a fire arrow through the floor, to make it bounce towards the pot at the top. It's a warp pot, and burn a lid. However, the way it bounces is RNG, and there's a one in third chance that it works. So hopefully it works. I have been getting really lucky in my practice. Um, but if I don't, it's no big deal. But yeah. Here we go. So first things first, I'm going to climb this rope. You hold R and mash A, you can get a lot higher. Remix. I'm gonna play a little bit safe because I have no magic. Um, looked a little bit weird there. And if you mess up, you let go. And if you have leaf and magic, you can just leaf and then regrab. But I have nothing, so I would fall all the way back to the bottom. And now I'm gonna do grapple skip. It's basically a little position set up to get through the floor here. There you go. Get magic. Now hope that this works. You'll hear something died up there. Didn't work. There's one more you can do though. Oh wow, okay, it worked. That is really lucky. Let's go. 
So now I can take this warp hut. I can't believe I said this, but uh, I, I'm kind of mad I did that funny swim now. I think, <laughs> I think uh, again, I have no idea what pace I'm on, but... I'm not telling you. I think it's pretty good. <laughs> Oh man, that is really funny. So now, I will explain this trick more in depth when I'm in the later cutscene. Because I'll have a lot of time to do that later. Basically, I need to get to the top of that ledge. Normally you need hookshot. I don't have hookshot. So I'm doing a hover. And I'm using this enemy to give myself a heart up there. Because I need to heal somehow out of a zombie hover. You'll notice that last time I was gonna die if I didn't... I, I, I was gonna die after getting the leaf, but I save warped out. Same goes here. If I hit the floor at all, I would die. So I'm just trying to uh, set this guy up a little. Okay, that's good enough. It's uh, good enough. And now I brought a safety more. So I can kill this guy get another heart, because this final boss does one heart of damage per attack, so if I were to get hit once, I would die. Alright, here we go. Oh man, do I do I want I don't think I want to look at look, the face. Don't I'm not gonna look. Look. I'm not gonna look. Final boss. Okay, so basically, um normally you need to kill that enemy the more with the sword for it to drop a heart. And if you don't, it'll drop nothing. So I shot it with an arrow, though, and you'd be asking, I shot it with an arrow. Why did it drop a heart? Um, if you notice closely, at the very start, I slashed the morph and killed it, but it also got stuck to me. And that put it in a weird pseudo state where it's dead, but it's not at the same time. But the next time you kill it with anything, it remembers that it was first killed by a sword. So no matter what you kill it with, it drops you a heart. So no, it does not always give you a heart back. You need to do that glitch to make sure that it thinks it was killed by a sword. Um, yeah. Final boss. There's like a three, four minute cutscene up here. And after that, like a 50 second fight. Pretty short. Um, this final boss in any percent setting is kind of scary because you only, well, at least if you do no safety more, you can only take one hit. Um, but it's pretty fast if you know what you're doing. Um, but yeah, I think because the last cutscene is kind of a little bit ending remarks, um, I am actually very, very, very happy with how this run's gone so far. Um, when you asked me to do this, um, I have been, I mean, I always play Wind Waker a little bit, no matter what, in the background. Like, I wasn't actively running it at the time, but I was definitely tinkering still, because I always tinker with this game. Um, but I definitely wasn't in shape, so I spent the past couple days getting into shape. And I was doing okay, like I was getting runs I was fine with, but this is... This run is way better than any of the runs I've had in all of my practice. Yeah. You've been rocking it. Thanks for, for taking another look at it for Time Capsule. Yeah, it's been very fun. I mean... While... I do have a love-hate relationship with this game at the end of the day, especially when it's been a little bit, a little while since I've played it, and like a speedrun setting, it is very fun to do. Because at least, well, I haven't been streaming that actively recently, um, but I've been doing Skyward Sword recently, and um, that's like oh, the okay. game I have been doing, and before that was probably different, because I basically stick to 3 Zelda's. But it's it's been a while since I've done Wind Waker, but it is my best game, so it's pretty, it's not easy, but it's like, it doesn't take a lot of time for me to get back into shape. Yeah, it's like, you know, riding a bike or, or whatever. Yeah. You just have to get back into it and the muscle memory will kick back in. Yeah, for sure. But the other games like the like Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, I suck at them if I don't play them for a while. <laughs> this game, though, like, I have put so much time into it to where very, very easy to put my bearings with. Yeah, well, it definitely shows. Like, this has been an incredible showcase of the game. Yeah, I haven't made a single mistake other than purposely doing something for fun. 
I guess my puppet again. Oh yeah, my puppet again is pretty good for you, actually. Oh man, yeah, this is it's quite good. I guess there were some moments where it like, took me a while to get storage, I guess. Very easy to lose time in storage. Yeah, the, the fight's about to start. Um, time will... So basically there's three phases of this fight. In the third phase I do a final attack where I stab Ganondorf in the head. In the moment where Ganondorf is stabbed in the head, that is time. Um, so about a minute from now. All right. Yeah, basically three phases. The first two phases are just doing enough damage to progress to the next phase, and then the last phase is just one hit. So phase one. Okay, I do not like this. Uh, this is not gonna hit, that's fine. A little bit of a flop, but I can just back it up. I don't like this. Oh god. Okay, that was a little sloppy. I lost like 10 seconds there, but a little scary from my I kinda messed up the consistent. Come on. Get over here. This is phase two. And this is phase three, so I'm gonna reflect the arrow off of my shield and then attack Ganondorf and that'll be the end. Oh, okay. I, I, that wasn't close to PB. <laughs> I thought that was a lot better than it was. You were getting you were getting me riled up. I was like, "What's going on? What's gonna happen?" Yeah, my PB <laughs> is a one fourteen fifty nine. Hey, but that's really close, and especially yeah. in in a marathon type setting, like you rocked it. That was yeah, that awesome. was pretty good. I'd, I'd have to look back, um, see exactly where I lost all the time. If I had to guess, I lost like over a minute in Home Rock. EJ, no. do you think that you're gonna kind of keep grinding this out a little bit, or you're not sure? Um, yo, what's up, Andy? Thanks for the use. Um, uh, my grind was pretty much the sub 115, although that was before the hole in one quiver strip. Ah, true. Um, so I definitely, and I'll probably lost like a minute on that segment in PB, so there is a lot of room for improvement. Um, well, I mean, yeah, just take it at your own pace. I think I I I don't like switching games when I have like a goal in mind. So right now that goal is like Skyward Sword, I want to get a certain time at any percent. So that's kind of what I'm majorly doing right now. However, this is a, this kind of is a fun thing to do when I don't, when I just want to like relax. So definitely, I won't commit to a grind, but I will <laughs> Not the grind. definitely. Uh, a few runs. I will definitely, I, I'm definitely down to do a few runs here and there. <laughs> Or races. We do some races sometimes. Awesome. Well, um, EJ, do you have any like shout outs or comments that you want to leave um, our viewers with? Let's see. Well, first of all, shout out to the Wind Waker community, of course. Of course. None of this would be possible without the collective effort. Um, specific people who have been like, the main person I think who inspired me is probably Demon for those, those. I think Zelda speedrunners know who Demon is. He's a pretty, pretty good Zelda runner. But yeah, um, a shout out to the community, um, and shout out to BDQ for giving me this opportunity. And thank you, Tippy, for giving me the opportunity to show off this run. Of um, course. This run was actually recently shown at GDQX by the world record holder, and he did pretty well, good as well. But it's always nice to show it off more. Because um, again, um, I think nothing between the two runs changed except for the setup I did for the quiver swim. Those were literally found like yesterday. So That's I had so to, wild like, to me. Like, wow, and implementing it in in the run today, like that's cool. You yeah, went for it. I, I was a little nervous about that, but honestly they're they were they're a little to be honest, they're they're better than the old setups. So, well, and sometimes that's what it's all about, you know, trying yeah. new things and, and having fun. So we definitely appreciate you being here and um, de-resting the game, if you will. Um, yeah. So thank you, EJ. And I will say to all of you in chat, if you had fun watching the Wind Waker run, make sure you follow EJ125 here on Twitch. That is pinned 
by Richard. Thank you, Richard. And um, yeah, that is actually going to wrap up our episode of Time Capsule tonight. So if you are watching this on YouTube from the future and you had a good time with us, be sure to press the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, if you're interested in catching our shows live, you can always find us at twitch.tv slash games done quick. Um, I have been your host, Smooth Operative. Thank you all very much for watching. You can tune into Hotfix tomorrow for Mercy Kill, followed by Passion Project, all starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, again, EJ, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I had a blast. I hope everyone did too. So have a beautiful day or night, my friends, wherever you are in the world, and we will see you next time. Goodbye.